or something. Please join me in the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Selectman's Meeting, uh, November 20th, 2017. Uh, let, just let me, make, let me make an announcement. If anybody's here for Warren articles, the only opportunity you'll have to speak is during public comment period. So if anybody wants to say anything about the Warren articles, they need to speak during the public comment period, okay? Not when the Warren articles come up. All right, so with that, uh, we have a public hearing which we will open up at 7.03, public hearing pursuant to RSA 41.9A to increase the administrative fee for police details from 30% to 50% to cover the current NHRS costs, Medicare costs, and to offset the town's workman's compensation insurance costs. Is there anybody from the public here to speak on that issue? You want to give us a little background? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the town currently assesses a 30% administrative fee to vendors for hiring police paid detail officers with the intent of offsetting costs as for the retirement system, for Medicare, and for the officers working on private details. In July, the municipal rate for police officers in the New Hampshire retirement system was raised to 29.43%. This increase along with the current Medicare rate of 1.45%, has increased the town's expense to 30.88%. By comparison, the town's administrative fee <clears throat> is low compared to neighboring communities. Seabrook has a 50% administrative fee. Many towns around us have a large dollar amount. Northampton charges $30 per hour administrative fee. Under the current collective bargaining agreement, an officer is paid $35 uh, or their overtime rate, whichever is higher. An additional $3 per hour is added if they are on an alcohol-related detail. With the variable rates of pay, an officer may receive, I would recommend, this is from the Chief of Police now, that the town continue with a percentage-based administrative fee. The fee should be raised to 50%, which covers the current New Hampshire retirement system costs, Medicare costs, and could offset the town's workers' compensation insurance costs. That's the chief's recommendation, Mr. Chairman. So we're just offsetting the fees to equal more of the costs? Yes. If, if an officer works a paid detail, we have to pay those administrative fees. So we're trying to recoup them from those people who hire them as part of their expense. Okay. Thank you. But what you just said was it was like 31% or 32%. Yet we want to increase it to 50%. Well, you also have the fees um, for workers' compensation, which are very high for police officers. Do we know what that is? And, and that, that's, this fee also pays for purchasing police cruisers and paying for police officer details on town, town uh, projects. So I can't tell you what the – I don't have the, the budget book with me. I can't tell you what the administrative fee is for uh, – uh, workers' compensation, but it's fairly uh, police officers are the highest workers' comp fee. So, is this just for uh, is this would there going to be more than one hearing? No, there's only one hearing required by statute. So, do we have to make a motion? Uh, you have to make a motion if you wish to do it. If you do not and you wish to postpone it to a later date, then we have to re advertise. Okay, I'll make that motion to allow it. Second, okay, comments. Yeah, uh, we just heard we have a, a $30 million uh, pension obligation for unfunded pension costs. Our uh, Group 2 uh, pension contributions are huge. Our workers' compensation uh, contribution is huge. It's ex extremely expensive to put a man in uniform in this town out on the street, and that doesn't count as training. That doesn't count vehicle maintenance. That doesn't count depreciation. So uh, um, that is a well-done job, whoever brought this forward, and uh, I would uh, ask for the vote. I, I would like to question, how, how does this affect nonprofits? I can see businesses, construction companies, et cetera, <clears throat> but a nonprofit that's putting something on for a fundraising like, or, or just like the uh, Christmas parade. That's a town function, so the, the police officers are paid out of that fund. Okay, so that, that's not a detailed? No. No, it's not. It's a town function. You close the road. You authorize the use. 
uh, the police are there to protect the public and to, and to control the control traffic and so forth. It's a, it's a departmental use. Okay. That's probably the only nonprofit we actually have during the course of the year. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody? Well, I think it's recommended by the chief. Yep. I think that should be good enough. And <clears throat> this is something this is hasn't been raised in quite some time. Okay. That's true. It hasn't yeah. been raised almost the entire time I've been here. And I will tell you, people are always asking. You know, that they think they see these things, th these details, and that we're not recouping the money. So this is an important thing. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. <clears throat> All right, now we will uh, close the public hearing at 7.08. We'll now go to public comment period. Anybody wishing to make any comments, if you would come up, you'd speak into the microphone, identify yourself and your address and what you uh, expect to speak on. Yes, good evening. My name is Leo Pisano, and I live at uh, 164 Linden Street, Everett, Massachusetts. I'm here speaking on behalf of my uncle Nicholas Forrestal, who has a cottage down on 10. Green Street, down Gentian Road, down in North Beach area. Uh, what we're, I'm here to speak on the, uh, I guess it's the uh, warrant article to appropriate the funds to do some research down there to find out why it's flooding all the time. And I'm here to speak in favor of that. And the reason I'm, all, I'm in favor of it is because right now, and for the past number of years, the flooding down on the corner of Green Street, Gentian Road, uh, has been to such a point where the cottage is becoming sometimes unusable. Uh, you can't get down the streets. I know you're all familiar with the problem. I'm not going to bore you to death with it tonight. I've spoken and sent letters to Mr. Bridal as well as, as, well as <clears throat> excuse me, to Mr. Welch last year explaining my the problem. I've spoken to a number of department heads. And I think uh, a gentleman by the name of Tom, uh, Brissett, I believe, has been up here speaking or has been in contact with you, letting you know of our problem and trying to get the neighborhood together. So I'm here basically to say would really appreciate if you could do something down there. It's gotten to the point where the front of the cottage, the grass is all ruined, the foundation is getting into it, and uh, if we don't get some relief down there, I think we're going to have a serious problem, meaning in maintaining the property. So whatever you could do, we would appreciate it very much. I think it would behoove you to do it for us. Uh, I know we're only up here six months out of the year, but in doing so, we don't draw on any of your services. There's no children involved. Uh, we don't draw on any, anything that costs the city any money. So we'd really appreciate it if you could find the, the money to be appropriated to relieve our problem. Thank you very much. Thank and I'll you. just like to submit uh, a copy of the letters that I sent to Mr. Bridal and Mr. Welch, okay? Okay. And thank again, you thank much. you very much for your time. Appreciate thank you. It. Anybody else wishing to speak at public comment? Hi. Um, my name is Mary Dre. I'm from 43 Hobson Ave. And I'm here to ask for your support to grant us the approval of the Warren Articles for the flooding study. And the reason why I'm saying that you guys should kind of approve it is because I hear that a lot of people say that you know, why it doesn't affect us. Well, in reality, it will affect you at some point. Right now, I have articles from newspapers. I have TV clips that show um, how Hobson Ave has been flooded. This here was in February, March of 2015. I have, you know, every time it's on the news, Hobson Ave is always on the news. Yes, Ocean Boulevard always gets flooded, Ashworth Ave always gets flooded, and Brown Ave. But Hobson Ave is always on the news, along with those other streets. Last night, yesterday, there was a high tide, just a normal high tide. wasn't even um, a king tide. It was a regular high tide. Manchester Street got flooded, and it was just a high tide. So I'm really asking for your support to do something to help us. Um, for that study and approve the Warren Articles. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Thank you for hearing us. Um, my name is Steve Belgiorno. 
I briefly spoke last week concerning the issues down on Manchester Street, and I'm just reiterating the problem. That's it's it's rampant. It's um, we're, we're at a dire emergency. Uh, our properties have been affected. Um, as mentioned, this weekend was a normal high tide, not a king tide, not even a 10-foot tide, and yet the water's coming up the street. We beg you for the support. Um, we appreciate what you've done so far. At least our cars are being saved by allowing us to move to other areas. But this issue and the, the long range of all of this is um, this winter, every single month, we're going to have at least 10-foot tides. Next month, we've got a 10-8. That usually means the marsh all the way up to Ashworth Avenue. You can't walk through it. You can't drive through it. We're basically totally incapacitated. So please, we, we, we beg you to continue with the support. We appreciate what you've done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Hi. Hi. I'm um, Madeline Gavin, and I live at 8 Green Street. And um, I've spoken here before and, and appreciate your support for looking into why this neighborhood is flooding to the extent that it does. Never used to flood, you know, 10, 15 years ago. But in the last 10 years, it's been a significant problem for our neighborhood. This week, I know, you know, in the past few weeks, there's been some work done with um, dredging into the marshes. Um, I'm not sure how uh, you may have to get a report as to how that has accomplished anything. I don't see any change because uh, gentian is still flooding. And when there was a high tide this past week, and it wasn't a significant tide, but it was still a high tide and some rain this week, we still have flooding halfway up Green Street. There wasn't any flooding this week on um, Meadow Pond, but there was, even this morning, significant flooding down on Kings Highway for the residents that live on 14th Street, 15th Street. There's significant flooding in that area as well. So I think it's a town, I, based on what I'm hearing from the people that live down on Hobson, it's a town-wide issue, and I think it's something that would behoove the town to, you know, certainly approve this warrant article to do the investigation to find out what's going on. Even though this dredging has been done out into Meadow Pond, there still is standing water in our sewer drains. And that just doesn't make sense to me. I'm not an engineer. But if there's standing water in our sewer drains, and there's three of them in these areas of Gentian and Green Street, I mean, I'm so yes, Gentian and Green Street, if that water is standing, it can't move. It can't drain into the marsh. So it's, you know, certainly a flooding issue, but I think it's also a drainage issue. And the fact that these sewers are corroded. I had a sewer drug actually dug up in my front yard. And when they dug up that sewer, there was water. I had to have my water main replaced because it's rusted so much because it's always exposed to water. So Aquarian came out, replaced my water main, and then <clears throat> when they dug up this hole, the sewer is right there, you know, I don't know, 10 feet of sewer pipe, and the water was just coming out of it like a fountain that you would, you know, buy for decoration. <laughs> but this is in my front yard. So that water, even though they came from the Department of Public Works, and they very nicely looked at it, took pictures, I'm sure they were available somewhere, of this fountain in my front yard, and they covered it with a piece of some kind of black tarp, supposedly to contain the water, but that just means the water's still coming out of that drain pipe. So I don't think, it, in my neighborhood anyway, it's not just the marshes and the flooding, but it's also the, the sewers that have been in there for the, the drainage pipes that have corroded and have been in there for so long that it's something that has to be looked at as well, and the fact that those sewers and the drains are not draining in our neighborhood. The standing water continues to be there. So, I mean, I think I'm hopeful that, you know, whatever's been done in the marsh as far as the dredging that that company did will have some effect. I haven't seen it yet. There's just a lot of mud out there right now, and their equipment is still there. I'm not really sure. I'd like to get a status on that. I suppose I'll have to call um, the Department of Public Works. But um, the equipment is still there. I'm not sure if they're done. But um, 
I think the Warren article should be approved and everybody in my neighborhood, even though people don't live here full time, um, I think everybody feels the same way and you've been seeing those emails and letters as well. Thanks Thank very you. much. Anybody else wishing to speak? Mary Martell, I have property on 7 Manchester Street and I'm going to tell you the same, a lot of the same things that they're saying, but my family and I have had this property for over 40 years, and we never had this type of problem in the summer before. And it's even becoming a health issue when you have water and sewage from the marsh because people bring their dogs down there. It's, and it's also a rental problem. People come, they come here on a a time where there's high tide, full moon, maybe some wind. They don't know what to do with their cars. And people may not want to rent on some of these streets anymore if that, I don't see it getting any better, but it would be nice to see if you could do something to alleviate some of the problems. So I would consider you to vote on that Warren article and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Tim and Debbie Basha, 75 Hops and Ave. Um, we actually brought some pitches if I could pass them to you to look at. Um, these were during the King Tide, and the, um, the last two pitches were Saturday, this past Saturday, at the 9 2 um, Tide that is our car is in the water. Um, you can see during the king tide that the water is up to the third house, our driveway, our whole house is surrounded. Um, we have, uh, my mom is 92, uh, my daughter just had a baby, she's a month and a half, and um, when, when we have to park our car somewhere else because we can't park it in our driveway because of the high tides, it's, it's dangerous. We don't have um, access to, to get out. You can see our wall in the last picture that was just at the 9-2. That's, um, we've had the property now, our house for 20 years and um, you know, things are getting worse. And um, our wall we had built when we first bought and uh, most of it is pretty much down now because of um, the erosion and um, we've already had the foundation redone because of it, and uh, that was two years ago, and that's already taking a hit also. So <coughs> we hope that you'll approve the foreign okay. article or send it question. forward. It's public comment. We don't usually go back and forth. I would just like to know how long that water, does it, it drains out again as soon as it comes in, right? Within an hour or? Oh, oh yes. It does come in yeah. and goes out. It, it okay. comes That's in and goes out. Um, my thing is, is our house is totally, if, you know, you look across the street, the houses are totally surrounded. Yes, I mean, we're not stuck there for days. It's just, you know, when you're, when you're there with, um, you know, 92-year-old, month and a half, and, and not even, I'm not even saying that. It's just, you know, it's just the fact that we have to try to move our cars and get back to the house and... Trust um, me, I know. I have to move the, every time the yeah. tide comes in, and my customers are 92. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard? I was here last week, and I already spoke, but I on the, the mention of a rentals, our property is a rental. We have to do that. It has to pay for itself. And I was in touch with all of the, the rentals from last summer, and I had one reply from a woman that said, I would love to rent your cottage, it's lovely, but we can't tolerate that water. And so I really would appreciate that the article for um, the flooding issues, the King's Highway issue, uh, Meadow Pond, uh, Gentian Green, we really need to have this fixed 
or we're going to lose all of our, our all of our park property value. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, seeing nobody else will close this. And I, I just like to make one comment. E remember, this is a Warren article, and even if the board votes to approve it, it goes to a Warren article. So you got to get out there, and you have to campaign for it. You have to pr promote it. You have to keep talking about it, so that you get the votes. That's really important. So it's important to, to remember that, that you've got to get out there and get those votes to get it passed. Okay? You want to... That public comment, if you got public comment, but we can't, we're not going to go back and forth because that's not what public comment's for. All right. Uh, announcements and community calendar. Um, yes. Congratulations to the one and kind warriors. I graduated from there in 96, and they were an awesome football team back then, and I guess they still are. So state champs undefeated. Go Warriors. Rusty? Uh, first, condolences to Diana Martin and her family where her dad passed away this week. Uh, congratulations to the Morelli family. Uh, they were uh, recognized by uh, the Hampton Area Rotary as Citizens of the Year. Um, and if you, if you have a chance, I know that Channel 22 is going to start showing it. Uh, the American Legion and the Hampton Historical Society did a program called, I believe it's called Voices of World War I. Mm -hmm. And uh, it talks about uh, Hampton back during World War I, uh, pre-war, post-war, and during the war. And it's a, uh, about a half hour, but it's excellent to listen to if you get a chance to listen to it. Uh, it's very good. And Peter, I hope your mom feels better. Watch out walking down there. So. Rick? Um, <clears throat> uh, no, I would just like to say, because I know that um, this week when there was a high tide, the wind did blow, and it was blowing the water in, and so it, was, it took longer for the water to go out. But I just hope that you know, that when we're all are working on these Warren articles, that people just don't rely on that's going to fix their problem. People have got to make sure that they, I think the best thing people can do is look to see what they have to do to get flood insurance on their property at a reasonable rate and do what that has to be in order to get that. Otherwise, it's always going to be a problem. Phil? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I echo the remarks of the uh, prior selectmen on uh, victories and condolences. Uh, it's Thanksgiving this week, I believe. Uh, a happy Thanksgiving to everybody, and we're thankful that uh, this is such a great town, such a great state, and people can come out here and voice their concerns about their property, and we're, we're thankful for uh, the chairman's leadership and Mr. Welch's leadership. And uh, there was a birthday last week. Um, he was a young kid. He's only got about 50 years in the business of uh, municipal uh, leadership. His name is Welch, and uh, we, uh, on behalf of the town, wish Mr. Welch a very happy young birthday. Thank you. All right, and I would also like to ditto the football team. Congratulations on the championship. I'd like to carry it one step further, too. I went to a lot of games this fall, a lot of different teams, and I think the sportsmanship that is shown at Winnicott is exemplified. Okay. It, they're really a great, all the teams are really super, and the, the sportsmanship was just super all season. And condolences to Diana. All right, uh, consent cat agenda, nothing? Nothing. Wow. All right, appointments. Barbara Renault, cons uh, Conservation Commission Chair. Rayanne Dion, Dion, Conservation Coordinator. Draft bylaws for the town forest. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Rayan's putting up a map. Uh, so we thought we'd start with, with where the town forest is because we get questions a lot. Just where is the town forest? Um, um, Rayan has made a red line for Mill Road over there and then another one coming down for Barber Road and another one going up for Woodland Road. And where her finger just went by, his ice pond. And the entrances are on White's Lane, which is right there. And the entrance on Jaunty's Lane is off of Barber Road. The White's Lane is off of the mill. And the areas in green are the areas of town-owned land. 
So those are the areas that we're talking about with respect to these bylaws. Um, and I would just note there are um, two parcels that are kind of in the yellow color that are actually owned by Northampton. And there's actually some instances where some of these parcels that we own go into Northampton, so we own, both own a little bit of Overlap the each other's so. towns with what we own. <coughs> Here is the, a copy of those same parcels. Okay, so that tells us where we're talking about. In 2015, um, the voters established the town forest area, and the town forest area in that one article is described as those areas that are in green, the town-owned land within the area known as town, uh, 12 shares is the way it was worded. Okay, so that's how it got established. Um, now, with what we did, it's only been a couple of years, but the issue of needing to do something uh, actively to manage the forest area uh, was made clear to us this spring uh, when we did the cleanup. Uh, we took over a DPW truck's worth of debris out of there, including a refrigerator, a whole bunch of tires, <laughs> and hundreds of spent shells from firearms, uh, as well as a lot of other debris, but those are the things that we noticed uh, quite a bit. So our first attempt was to deal with trash, the whole idea of trash, the debris that we were finding, and how we could do that and provide either incentives or disincentives as necessary to have people take out what they bring in. Um, and we started trying to address that, doing cleanups, getting volunteers for cleanups, which we did. Um, but then we started getting complaints. Well, our, our summer, in, we, we started getting complaints from users of the forest regarding um, the target shooting because the users were fearful going in there with uh, target shooting going on. Then we had our summer intern uh, go out there this summer, and he identified fire pits and target shooting and trash as major human-caused issues that are going on out there. So we tried so how we tried to find a way to deal with all of these issues. And Rand started researching and looked into what other cities and towns were doing and found ordinances in other cities and towns, and we looked them all over and um, drafted up a set of rules and regulations, um, and then had a special meeting of the Town Forest Management Committee, which is made up of the Conservation Commission and the Tree Warden, who is the DPW director at, at the moment, and um, went over these bylaws very thoroughly and vetted them very thoroughly and came up with the version that you have before you now. Um, as it stands, we'd like this to be on the ballot as a Warren article. Uh, if we do it as the Town Force Management Committee, it will be a petition Warren article. So we would very much appreciate your support uh, to sponsor this uh, so that it doesn't have to be petitioned ar Warren article, but can go on as one that is recommended by the Board of Selectmen. So we'll be happy to answer any questions you have, address any issues that you might have with these. Um, I have an issue. I guess I have a question for maybe town manager. Is it possible to have us bring forward this Warren article so it doesn't have to be petitioned? Or Oh, certainly. You can bring back right? Forward any Warren article you wish. Because I think that this whole bylaws is a great idea, and I'd like to see it get on the ballot as is. <coughs> I would say there's um, one addition uh, that was just kind of added today. We made a table that lists all the map and lots of those that are in green that would go in here just to better clarify. It's, we would love, and it's certainly uh, the Conservation Commission's goal to be able to connect that area. So there's uh, one large contiguous town-owned parcel in the middle. As you see now, there's some private parcels that are kind of in the middle. So. Um, 
we wanted to, since it's not all in one group, we wanted to make sure it was clear which um, parcels these rules do apply to, um, with a little asterisk that it would cover any that we would hopefully uh, gain in the future, so it could be updated. Rusty? I, I agree with you. I think we, we do need to have some, um, some more guidelines out there for what we have in the hunting. I, I can see that. My only concern is just what you said with there being various number of parcels out there. How do you control that? I mean, it's easy to look at a map like this, but those lines aren't on the ground out there. Right. Yeah. And that's that's the hard part. Yeah. So, uh, while I, I agree with you, and I think we should have it as a Warren article, uh, it's not going to be the end-all, be-all for this whole No, thing. and I think the Town Forest Committee has a few projects that they need to work on um, besides hopefully obtaining some more land. There's signage that uh, needs to occur. Um, our summer um, conservation um, easement monitor um, went out there and walked all the various trails that he could find out there um, and took the GPS um, coordinates of those. So we need to sit down as a group and kind of finalize and you know make that trail system um, better defined, um, have some maps. So I think to that point, it, there's We've got a few steps to go to uh, to get it there, but I think this is an important one. Because we can definitely make bylaws and, and rules and regulations on what happens to ours, but it's tough when it's a private landowner. Yeah, yeah. one of they, the other things we're working on, Rusty, is um, some of these parcels in the in the center there, that center area. Mm -hmm. They're number one; they're landlocked, they're undeveloped, and based on ownership records, the owners do not live in the area. Um, and they have very low assessed values. Some of them are wet. They are landlocked. Um, so we want to reach out to the owners of these properties oh, I think it's great and idea. try to acquire them if we can. Absolutely. Uh, we think we can do it for relatively small money because of the assessed values. Uh, so we are going to work very hard at doing that because we would like to have the. It is confusing out there. Absolutely. Uh, and trail markings, mm -hmm. we're we're working on those uh, to to uh, ensure that we can identify the trails. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Rick. So, are those landlocked um, lots are any of them buildable? Uh, they're not, not on a class five road. I don't believe they are. They'd have to yeah. connect with something else that has frontage mm -hmm. and then create mm -hmm. something. But it isn't like all that. just marshy out there. Mm. Probably not all of it, but there are sections that are wet. I'm not sure this yeah. map does the best job of it, but there's certainly, um, um, you can see, sometimes you'll see kind of darker patches, that's pretty wet up there. Um, there's a little pond over in here. Um, I know there's some, some parts that are wet uh, in there, but not necessarily all of it, but there is some. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I've reviewed your uh, draft for your, your town uh, bylaws and uh, under permitted uses, uh, number 2B, uh, I have a concern about uh, any hunting uh, or any trapping giving the uh, close proximity to uh, residences and maximum effective ranges of those weapons uh, on town property. Uh, this is not uh, the uh, great, great north. This is uh, uh, very close to uh, residences, and uh, I am not in any way convinced that uh, anybody can go out there with any weapon uh, with uh, um, any degree of certified skill set, uh, any training, any life safety <coughs> training, and I think it's a, a life safety issue. Uh, and I understand uh, gun rights and uh, the Second Amendment, but I'm, I'm, I am opposed to uh, any hunting or trapping out there. Trapping, uh, I think, uh, uh, could be additionally especially dangerous. Under uh, Section 3, prohibited uses, target shooting, uh, there, there is no uh, uh, shooting range out there, and I know that has been the, um, the uh, emphasis on the uh, weapons discharge out there, and it's seriously problematic. I would include uh, any bow hunting uh, out there on that property. Uh, I would not be uh, in support of any, any bow hunting. I find it difficult to uh, um, 
rationalize and visualize the juxtaposition of people enjoying a quiet stroll in the office with rounds going down range or uh, bows uh, uh, and arrows uh, that can be lethal um, uh, in the area. Uh, so I would uh, um, encourage those uh, considerations. Um, and I don't speak for the board, um, but I would not uh, um, approve this as uh, drafted. I think it should be more stringent. And uh, I think if there's any camping out there, it should be by permit. Uh, I think people could uh, loiter, they could linger, um, and there is uh, an unknown to people with uh, camping. Again, it's not the Great White North. This is a residence area. It's a different uh, world today. In uh, camping, I don't know exactly where that is, but uh, campfires are prohibited. Uh, but if you could include uh, camping by permit, that is that is a document that I I think needs tightening it up in my estimation. So are you talking about under other uses where they could get a permit for camping? Or are you saying that camping should be prohibited under? Oh, I don't I don't mind if somebody goes out there and camps overnight. I think that's that's a lovely experience. But I think the town should know if people are um, out there camping. I just think it's a matter of life safety. If there's a medical issue, uh, people should know that uh, there are people out there. So okay. that would be other uses sure. and um, with uh, prior written approval. Yeah. So that would be C there. Yeah. So if you could, if you could address those, if you choose to. <clears throat> and um, thank you for your presentation, and thank you for bringing it to the board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I will mention one thing because <clears throat> I did the research on it because I wondered about trapping myself. That was a question when we discussed this. Uh, we had trapping under prohibited uses on a f previous draft of this. So I went on to Fish and Games web website and educated myself on trapping. And um, it's trapping and hunting are very highly regulated by New Hampshire Fish and Game. Um, and you could spend days on their website. Uh, and trapping, um, number one, you have to have a permit to do it. In order to get a permit, you have to be edu educated in the ways of trapping. The trap has to be identified like lobster traps. So if you find one, you know who it belongs to. Yeah. And there just, are, like, just, like the hunting, it. there are seas and, and, say and this, stuff. That, so um, we ended up moving it up to the permit. Yeah, land I, I, uh, I have a problem. You need landowner permission to trap. In the rules. Yeah, in I, the I, rules. I understand yeah. that. And again, those are those are state regulations. This is the yeah. town of Hampton, and uh, right. I have serious problems. And I think our uh, restrictions sh uh, should uh, prevail and be more res uh, restrictive than uh, the uh, states. The I think when you go out to White's Lane, uh, you should have a presumption uh, that you're not going to step into a trap, uh, that you're not going to be shot by a bow or a rifle or a pistol. And I think that's a pretty uh, um, low standard uh, to uh, achieve. So thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I like the general outline and stuff. I think it needs a little work. I think it needs a little bit more more work. And uh, I'm not really sure how I feel about the hunting and trapping. I mean, New Hampshire state laws, I'm not sure can the town override a state law on that? Would you have to post the whole, a whole property? Good question. That's half an answer. Yeah, the good question. I think, you, I think you need to go to legal and have a little bit more uh, detail done on this. I think which would be important to see if okay. we can override mm -hmm. a state law and how much it, I know private property you would have to post it all the way yes, you would. Mm -hmm. so that would be interesting um, <clears throat> the fireworks fireworks are already outlawed in I mean in Hampton right they are so I mean that's that's already done I mean it, it's not followed I understand that but it's already done yeah we kind of had that conversation that we were uh, Jay and I actually that it is redundant, but probably isn't a okay. bad thing to put That's in fine. a second time. But, That's um, fine. That's okay. fine. Uh, yeah, but I, I would think just I would run this by legal a little bit more. You know, okay. I think it's a good idea. I think I think town forest should be a place where people can go out and feel safe. And uh, but it's town forest; it's multiple use. True. And so multiple, multiple use, use is yeah. uh, multiple use. Yeah. So I think we got to know exactly what. What is multiple use means and what is allowed and what isn't allowed. Mr. Chairman, what I'd suggest is that <clears throat> you have a structured fine. Uh, you say, um, quote, not exceeding $1,000 for each such offense. Yeah, we pulled that right out of the RSA. Yes, I know you yeah. did. And what yeah. happens there, and I've done this because I've been enforcing these things for years, yeah. is you go to court and the judge says, well, I don't think it's very serious. Fine's a dollar. 
<laughs> or the finest wave. Yeah. Okay. It, as long as it doesn't exceed a thousand dollars, he can just wipe it right out right, right. then and there. Most right. ordinances like this have structured fines: the so fifty dollars first offense, hundred dollars second offense, something like that. So that you do have a deterrent, because the judge can take your deterrent away, and it's just a snap of mm -hmm. a finger. And a lot of them will, because these are considered yeah. to be nuisance cases in front of the court, just like dog licenses. Okay. Oh. All right. Just, just a suggestion. Yep. But I have a question, like Rusty, too, about enforcement. Now, I mean, there's not supposed to be any dogs on the beach. You go to the beach any day, right? <laughs> Tons of dogs. Tons of dogs. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's not. It, it, there's a, there's an ordinance. There's a, a state law. There is and it, then it's people, then it's yeah. just not enforced. So I think I think tighten it up and, and come back with it probably. Are there any other sections that you guys have? I like like Phil identified some that some that he was comfortable with and not comfortable with. Yeah. Are there any others? I suggest you call it an ordinance because you've got to call both a bylaw and an ordinance. Everything else Mark we have. Mark told in, me to call it a bylaw. <laughs> well, everything else we have in town on the record book is an ordinance. Okay. So sure, it and started you use out both as an ordinance. Both terms, so it can get confusing. Sure. I like the idea of other, as, as Mr. Bean said, for, for camping if we have, and, and I'm just thinking of the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts mm -hmm. want, want an area mm -hmm. to camp out. Mm -hmm. yeah. We should have that by a special permit. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I think that's just exactly what this type of property is okay. is meant to be. And, and obviously, uh, so if we have some organizations that want to use it for mm -hmm. that, we can, we can do a special permit. Yeah, I mean, we had in there like public functions, educational events, thinking that Boy Scouts might right, get a fall right. over there, but we could be a little more specific. And, and, and as far as the, mm -hmm. the hunting, I, I think the state does a pretty good job, like you said, at, at doing it, and I think they can, um, their guidelines are, are, you know, a lot of people have used that Extraction. land for hundreds of years to hunt and fish, and because there are some ponds out there, and there were some fish out there at one point, uh, but. Uh, you know, and a lot of hunting goes on out there, and I, as so long as, so long as they're doing it legally, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have a problem. And, and are you going to identify uh, bicycle trails, mountain bike trails? It says non-motorized uh, bicycles on approved trails only. Are you going to are you going to identify those trails That's that are kind of yeah, as part of our next step of okay. having a better yeah. formalized set of trails? Yes. Okay. Does the Contra um, Conservation Commission take any position on these, like it was just voiced by the people that were here earlier about dogs going to the bathroom in the marsh? Because a lot of people do that. I know I've seen signs, uh, metal signs, there was one right near my house in the marsh that says it's against the law. Is that a state law or a town law? Oh. It's both state and town. Yeah, yeah, offering a fine, I think it said. Yes. Uh, so maybe something needs to be done um, to in these areas, in these streets where, uh, like that woman said, people just bring their dogs down there. Are they, are they picking it up? I mean, you're not allowed to drop, uh, do, drop dog uh, you know, the bags into the tr uh, sewer and all yeah. of that. Right. People should definitely be picking it up. And, I'm not, you know, it's I just wonder if the Conservation Commission could do something. As in a public outreach, are you? Yeah, or, or try to maybe get a, a program of having some signs put on the end of these streets or wherever where people have areas that should be Trillet. being protected mm -hmm. um, and they're not being protected. Sure, I mean, I certainly have seen some of the signs there. I don't know which streets don't yeah. have signs. Because it might be something that we should take a look at because there are certain areas that are more conducive to go down and take a walk and hang out down there or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think it should be posted that people aren't allowed to do that. Um, I, I know that most people that walk their dogs don't tend to bring them over to the marsh, but, right. you know. On the, and the other uh, thing that I wanted to mention tonight is there's an an alarming amount of people complaining about the uh, dogs going to the bathroom on the sidewalk again. Now, for a couple of years, it had stopped, right? but it's back bigger than ever right yep. now. And we've stopped talking about it, and it's back. Mm -hmm. And I hear the people, some of the ones in the new condos, are they just can't believe it because where they lived in Arlington and Boston, it would never be allowed. No. But yet here in Hampton, it is. Agreed. I have a question about yep. what Rick. So we do have we do have a dog waste ordinance, right? Yep. 
So it's going to be the same type of thing as this. It's uh, like yep. Rusty said, how yep. is it going to get invo enforced? Yep. Because I agree. Believe me, I have a dog and I walk them, but I, you know, I have a bag and I pick it up. I bet you there's people who think they can that it's not hurting anything by going into the marsh, and those are the ones I think that need to get warned, at least be reminded. Right, because it hurts a lot. Yeah, I, I mean I agree 100 percent. But every entrance at the beach, there's a sign. <laughs> yeah, but I think and, Rick's talking about it's happening. Yeah, no, like, but I mean where the signs are, they don't pay attention. Oh, yeah. And I agree 100 percent that the. I they personally should be feel attention. that people are letting their dogs out at night on Ocean Boulevard and the dogs just run over there and they're big dogs that are, Look, and that's what happens. I, I've, I've stopped people who are walking their dog and had it done and they start walking away. So how, ideally, how would that ordinance get it, get it forced? Does anyone even it's know? You're talking about the dog right. one or <laughs> the dog <laughs> one? Who would enforce it? Would it have to be an animal control officer or the police department have to be a sworn officer. Has to be a sworn officer. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just not going to happen. We fought this battle for a long time. But people have to want to do the right thing. Yep, you right. agree. And our animal <laughs> control officer has no jurisdiction on state property at all. Huh. That's a problem. So much for the beach, yeah. Yeah. That's why there's no enforcement on the beach, because there is nobody to enforce. But it's going to be the same for. So my understanding here. with yeah. with this was in the conversations that I've had with the, um, the police. police chief is yeah. that um, at least the one of the bigger one being the target practice is that where that area is it's it uh, is 300 <coughs> feet away from any inhabited dwelling so it's not on the lawful but if an ordinance were passed by the residents at town vote right. that prohibited then he can go in there and tell them to that right. that it's not allowed assist. so. And this residents have been calling the police. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, residents have been have told us that they have called the police and you know been told that there is nothing right. there. Right. It's so one we're of the things. Yeah, one I of agree. the bridge that impetus percent. for us. I think we all think it's a good idea. Yeah. So what? Um, how should we proceed? So we'll obviously we'll we'll meet with Mark. Um, we can make some revisions. Um, then come back, make another appointment with you guys, and do this a second yeah. a second yes. time. Is that okay? Yeah. Super. All right. Thank you very Great. much. Okay. Approval of minutes, November 6th, 2017. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, petition warrant articles for zoning may be submitted to the Board of Selectmen until December 13th. So time is running and it's running quickly. Petition warrant articles for other than zoning can be submitted to the Selectmen at any time. Closing date there is in early January. Uh, except for uh, bond issues, I don't expect we'll see one of those, but they're, they close five days earlier than the January, I believe it's January 9th deadline day for regular articles. Leaf pickup is going to continue this week. Please place your leaves in biodegradable paper bags or in containers other than town trash and recycling containers. Again, that's we get penalized for that when we take it to the dump because we're not allowed to deposit leaves there by federal law. Uh, work on Lafayette Road is basically completed. Paving and cleanup will continue for, for the remainder of the week. We expect them to be out of there by the end of this week, uh, certainly uh, before uh, Thanksgiving Day. Those interested in working for public works should look at their job openings, including the position of general foreman for highways and transfer station chief operator at the transfer station. That's about it for this week, Mr. Chairman. Other than, other than the town hall is closed on Thursday and Friday this week uh, in celebration of Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank Questions? You, so, Mr. Town Manager, number five is because of the retirements of Frank Swift. Yes. And, uh, Mark, Mark Richardson. Richardson, yes. Right. Yep. The latest in the continuing retirement of our older employees. Right. And there's more to come for public works, correct? We're expecting within the year that we'll have between 12 and 15 retirements in a 40-man department. And I'll emphasize that only because there are days when we have only one man in the highway department because they're all out picking up trash. Rusty? Yeah, and just just to clarify, the work on Lafayette Road is, is basically completed 
for the fall. That's correct. It will yeah. resume in the springtime it will. to finish the project. So. Rick? No, thank you. Thank you. Bill? Thank you, Mr. Welch. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, I have no questions. Uh, draft warn articles. Uh, we all had them last week. We looked at them. We should go over them. Uh, I, I think, well, we'll start with Regina. Well, I've looked at them, but I have a couple questions as far as the bonds. I mean, I, I went down and I toured the, uh, this afternoon, I actually toured the wastewater treatment plant facility. And I have one word, horrendous conditions for anyone working down there or having to go there for any reason. It has been uh, completely neglected, in my opinion, by the town. And I, although it's a big money article, I definitely think it needs to get on there. And this board, with the help of the town manager, needs to somehow figure out some type of way to offset some of the cost. But it's definitely something that's got to get approved, and I would like to see it get approved for this town meeting. And if anyone has any doubt with the amount of money or the conditions of what should be done down there, I strongly urge to, uh, I think we're going to try to have some information put up on Channel 22. Yes. And I think closer to the town meeting date, there's going to be some tour dates <coughs> where anyone interested can go down, but at least if we have something up on the cable channel, if people can't make it down there, they really need to see for themselves the condition of it and what all those men down there working on a daily basis. And for, in my mind, I that would be the one big bond that i like to see move forward for the town warrant this year. So and are I, we discussing these individually? I think we should. The, the warrant article. Yeah, we can. Should we go yes. through them one by one? I think we need to talk, yeah, because I'm not comfortable with that thing. Okay, well, let's let's do this then. Uh, the Church Street Main was zeroed out because it goes into the Warren article, if we have that. Correct, Miss? Yes? Yes, sir. So the first one would be the Bicentennial Seawall, which is 2,000, 2, 2,500,000. Five. That, that's, that's an estimate. That's an it's estimate. It's out to bid now. It's out to bid now. So do we want to go around and discuss these each individually? Yeah, so we can t talk about... That's good. So what is the current condition of the bicentennial wall right now? It's the, just been stabilized? Well, it's been stabilized because the board authorized about $185,000 worth of expense to put gigantic boulders in front of it right. to keep it stable. There's no base on the wall. It's just simply sitting on sand. If that sand should be washed out in the back, the wall will collapse and disappear. It fall into the ocean. Um, something needed to be done. It's a temporary measure to fix it, to, to keep the water from, to keep the ocean from the waves from, from deteriorating that wall and causing it to collapse. We forced it up against the embankment that it sits on and we're holding it there with those rocks. Uh, but eventually it's going to have to be replaced because there's no base to it. It was put in by the federal government, I believe, to the Coast Guard station. And um, that was a long time ago. Rusty? I think we've, we, we've, we've shorted up. I don't know if this year is the right time to do this or not. I, know, I, I like to see, as with Regina, uh, we've got to start working on the wastewater treatment plant. And um, if we could hold off for this for another year, um, I, I just think that would be m more prudent and uh, work more on the bond. Rick? Um, so uh, is that what we're doing here not tonight, deciding if we're going to ask these to go forward? I mean, You I'm, can. Yeah. So what do you feel about that, Mr. Walsh? The wastewater treatment plant is... How about the... Uh, the, the, the wall? The wall. Well, we've, we've done the best we can to stabilize it. Mm -hmm. And as long as there is no catastrophic uh, storm, a class 5 hurricane or something of that nature... It's probably going to hold where it is, but we have to continue to be very watchful for it, and so we have to keep, continue to keep people off of, off of it because we don't want something to happen to them. We don't have a, uh, a good estimate of what it's going to cost. We're out to bid now, and we won't have that until the bids come back, which is closer to the end of the month. So that's going to be in time for the Warren article. Yes, sir, if, we, if you decide to put it on. Mm -hmm. so it's so, you know, I think it's a good idea. Uh, I think maybe with this one we need to wait until we do get that bid. 
and take a look at maybe it's a good deal maybe it's a not as good a deal as we would think and uh, we don't know that till we actually so receive the money i'd like yeah. to see what the amount is for mr. the bid mr bean thank you mr chairman uh i have uh um offered the recommendation and uh uh, perhaps the course of action that Plosnick and Anderson, our auditors, will uh, plus up their contract. This was uh, at least two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, given the substantial amount of uh, infrastructure, dire need that we have, including the folks that are sitting back here, um, whose properties are substantially ruined and economically disadvantaged. Uh, and uh, I'm waiting for that um, uh, report from them. Uh, because it's tens and tens of millions of dollars and needs like these folks have need to be prioritized at seawall and uh, I don't have that and I don't think that we will be following best practices in the absence of that uh, I don't think the budget committee can uh, get the information uh, there will be two bodies that are kind of doing a stab at the dark about gut feeling and emotion and piecemealing it and I think that uh, with bonding rates uh, with uh, a plus up of that contract, uh, they can uh, identify two or three different courses of action to include these uh, underwater streets at Jensen and Green and down at the main beach at Manchester that we've heard about tonight. Uh, and then I will be able uh, and be more fully prepared in the best interest, and I think the board and the budget committee, and we'll share that information to make these decisions. But to go piecemeal um, on $2 million here, $4 million there, um, I don't think that is uh, professional grade. And that's just my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, um, <clears throat> I agree that probably we, we don't have enough information on this now. It's not the year to do it, maybe. It, 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 does, it does seem to be stabilized. I'm down there all the time. Uh, the boulders seem to hold it. The, the wall, there is, the, the, the wall has no foundation whatsoever, what That's you correct. say. And if that wall were to give out, we'd have a worse flooding problem. In the early 1700s, there was no wall there. And there was a huge storm which opened that whole area up, and that's why we have Meadow Pond. If that were to happen again, we'll lose everything on, on High Street at that end. So, I mean, we're, we're talking about serious consequences if something d dire happens that we're not expecting. Right. They weren't expecting a storm in the 1700s. We're praying there won't be one now. Right. Uh, but if there is, and it gets behind that wall and, and takes that sand out from behind it, the wall's going to collapse. Yep. And the sand, the water is going to go right over it. Yeah. I want to say I agree with Phil about uh, taking w how we talked with um, the uh, people that did the audit. You know, he stated that we don't have enough um, stuff set up for to be depreciated yep. in the future, and maybe that is something that we need to think of. And if we could get some guidance there, you know, maybe we could make. Uh, some clearer judgments. Okay. So, yes. So could we actually set up a time and a place to do that so that we can, I mean, now it's going to be, you know, what Thanksgiving and, well, I'm just, as far as the Warren articles, I know we still have time, but I would to like to have all the information, whatever information we're going to obtain sooner rather than later so that we can figure out what we're going to do as a board and we can start to sell it because pretty soon it's going to be January before we know it and we're going to be running out of time. Well, we have to wait till we, we find out what Warren articles we're going to have until we start to sell them. Uh, that's right. why at this time of the year, this is when we look through and we look through the Warren articles and we decide which ones we're not going, we know we're not going to support. Okay. So if we can drop some of these things out as we go, that's what needs to be done. And, you know, after we're all done, then we can figure out what we're going to sell. So what are we, what are we doing with the bicentennial wall? Well, I think we've decided, when I heard here, we have, don't have all the information that we're going to have Wait, before that time meeting comes. We need to know what the, bond is, what the cost is going to be. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll, what's the next Just one? holding off or yeah. taking hold it off? Yeah. But as off. far yeah. as, I know, I understand we don't have enough information on the wall, but as far as what, what Selectman Bean is saying, if we're going to use those services. What, what services the are those? From, uh, uh, but auditing firms audit. If, what are they if, going to if, do? I, if I may, and, and I've spoken with, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Thank you, sir. Uh, when Scott was in here from Plotznik and we reviewed the financials for 2016, he was specifically asked if their firm uh, offers additional services, and of course they do. 
This is tens of millions of dollars of infrastructure that I think without their guidance in terms of analysis, in terms of bond rate, in terms of working closely with finance and our public works and our town manager uh, and folks like this, that they can assemble a core of projects, have a tax impact in a collective group of infrastructure investment uh, that could be tens of millions of dollars. And then in a coherent manner, Mr. Chairman, and they, they do add this, they do more than auditing. They can provide that, they can sit in here, they can sit in here with finance, with per mostly public works and the town manager, and we can cohesively define infrastructure requisites that are going to address these problems, uh, a couple of more, and actually look at those tax impacts. Uh, it's been requested, perhaps Mr. Welch can share some light on where we are in that, but I would think that that firm could do that uh, in a matter of a day. Uh, and come in here, say, by mid-December uh, and provide that input. But we probably have to sign some type of agreed-upon procedure or something like that, I would Yeah, imagine. they would plus up their contract, and I, I, I think right. it might cost $1,000, 2000 3000 I absolutely do. Yeah, we already have a contract with them. It's only a matter of adding conditions to the contract. So has has anybody talked with them about I mean, I don't, no, I don't feel is, is talking to them about it. Is talking to them. Yes, they are, actively. Is this something we can get done before we have to move move these warrant articles? Well, before you can move the bonding articles, I believe you should. Okay. I believe you should. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of... One of the big problems that towns in New Hampshire have is that the legislature many years ago passed a law forbidding sinking funds, depreciation, okay? So normally with utilities like, for instance, the wastewater treatment plant, sewer utilities, when you um, structure rates or whatever you're going to use, you include depreciation in there. The depreciation is put in the bank, allowed to earn interest, and when repairs need to be made, you don't have to go out and bond for them. You've got the money. We can't do that in New Hampshire except under the special conditions. We need to find out how we do that. We need to find out under the law what we can do with depreciation funds, not sinking funds, and how we can try to structure this so that in the future the town doesn't have $40 million worth of emergency <laughs> appropriations right. to make. That's the name of the game. And uh, Plaza and Sanderson can do that for us because they're in that business. Okay, no, so no, not do it. So we, th we're talking to them talk right to now. Them. We will have something in place. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to hear like what they say. What what should what would they recommend now? What would they recommend three years from now, and maybe five years from now? You know, not what p specific things, but what value dollar what amount dollar I values you have yeah. yes. for the bonding. Right. For the bonding, I agree 100 percent. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I also agree with it's not just a financial decision on the wastewater treatment plant. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's no, 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 definitely. But I mean, yeah. so let's say they say, well, you should do 15 mil yeah. million. Yeah, yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. And yeah. I think we should do that. And Whatever. if we can get that done, yeah. let's do it. We should be able to get that done. Okay. And I'd just like to make a statement on the wastewater treatment plant because, like uh, Regina, I went down there and took a tour last Friday. And first of all, the, the, the crew down there does a phenomenal job with what they have to work with. And they should be, every day, people should be thanking them because they do a phenomenal job with. with ancient stuff. And when you go down there and take a tour of that wastewater treatment, your eyes just bulge out. And that is the heart of the city, if you think about it. If the wastewater treatment plant doesn't work, nothing works, and nothing is going to go anyplace. And it's very, very important that we pay attention to that this year, and that we pay attention to what needs to be done down there. There are situations that people are working in, in life-threatening situations, that just is not right. It, the, the Pierce Wright uh, report gives us that. So we got to pay attention to that, and I, I agree on the bonding. We should do it properly and get it done, and, and let's work on that absolutely. Right. So should we go through the other warrant articles that are not bonding? Right, but while we're on this discussion, is it okay if I bring up something that's in new business? Because what we're talking about sitting down with the auditors right now and figuring out what's a good way to financially spend money on bonds. Um, I've been looking... And we talked about a couple of weeks, last week, I guess, enterprise fees we talked about, Public Works brought it up. Yeah. Well, that was actually a Massachusetts statute. So I went on to NHMA, and I found um, 
in 2009, there was a publication, Basic Financial Policies yep. uh, Guide for New Hampshire Cities and Towns, <coughs> which I would like to, it looks like we're going to actually have to call and request this because it was sent, but we can we are unable to find it from 2009. But it says you can call and request. Yep. So I'm assuming if we contact NHMA, because I would like to read that whole entire thing. I've started looking into the laws. And basically what it is, it's based on either the consumption of water or the amount of people that are served by the sore, by the sore premises. And what this, what I would really like to try to do for this town meeting is perhaps have the town manager come up with some type of a generic warrant article that would simply authorize us as selectmen in the town manager's office that would be approved by the town to start researching this and figuring out if it's something that could or could not work for Hampton, something we've never done before. But what it does is it would put money aside every year so that we could start building up for some of these uh, sore, sore anticipation costs. Well, they're not really anticipated. We know that we got $41 million, but it's going to be ongoing with the drainage problems we have with everything. So while we're talking about Warren articles, I really just figured I'd bring that up right now. I uh, want to do a little bit more research on it, but I think it's something that really the town needs to consider, and I think we want to get the townspeople on board this year as opposed to doing research and then trying to explain everything next year so that they sort of have a, uh, a – um, they could know what we're trying to do ahead of time so that maybe that will – perhaps whatever we decide to do for a bond will – make it easier for them to say yes to it, knowing that we are trying to put some additional uh, offsets in place. So, does that sound okay? Yeah, <laughs> I agree. So were there only those two bonding articles? I don't have my list with me. Uh, there were three, Church Street, Force Main, which yeah. the board has said they're not going to consider, yeah. the Bicentennial Seawall and the Wastewater Treatment Plant. Okay. Those are the only ones. Okay. So as far as the wastewater treatment plant that I wanted to comment, I'm, I, I think that we should have it to be 13.8 uh, 13 million, which is the estimate. I realize that, um, that it would be nice to put more, but right now those are the numbers we have. I think we should stick to it and then come up with something again next year or the year after. Um, that's going to be part of that whole bonding yes. issue, the whole yes. depreciation, the whole thing. Right. So I, I think we can hold up and, and, mm -hmm. and wait until we get yeah, that. Yeah, if they came and said, well, it should be this much, well, then I would be okay. willing to reconsider Good. that. All right, so the other ones, the non-money articles. Yeah, no. Anybody want to put those forward? Yeah, why don't we go over them one by one? Okay, all say, service Some of them we're going to recommend and some of them we're not going to want to Okay, do. all service veterans credit. Yes. Yes. All right, all in favor. With a motion yeah, in it. You can vote on it. Okay. Yeah. Five. Harbor dredging and restoration article. That's, that's, make the motion. That's, yeah, I'll make the motion. I'll, I'll second it. Okay. Favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Kino? I'll make the motion. So moved. Second. Yep. Favor? Election of officers. Oh, that's required by law. <laughs> <laughs> Zoning articles. We don't have them yet. <laughs> all right. Conservation, and now we're going to annual appropriation. Uh, Appropriation articles, conservation land acquisition fund, twenty thousand dollars. That's every year, right? Every year we've been appropriating that. Yes. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Household hazardous, hazardous waste collection, fifteen thousand down to ten thousand. Ten thousand is what we've been spending with the state aid, and I, I would recommend you continue. So moved. That. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Human service agencies. So moved. We've heard from all of them, correct? I have heard from all of them, and there is a cut because one of them we're down from one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars because one of them has lowered their costs, okay. which was a good thing. They got more federal aid. Okay, so moved by Rick, seconded. All in favor? Highway block grant the three hundred and sixteen thousand two hundred and thirty-one rather than the five sixty-five. The reason the three sixteen two thirty-one is the exact amount the state is going to give us for that work. That will allow us to sort of lay off the Im impact and the tax rate. We are running out of streets to do that don't have uh, sewers we can pave over. 
So we, we're going to have to start working on which streets we can do in conjunction with replacing the sewer lines. Okay. All in, uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, police forfeiture special revenue fund. So moved. Second. All in favor? DPW vehicle purchases. So moved. How much is it? Five, Five, I'm sorry, 522000 They're going to start by replacing some of the one arm or the side two arm pack. Two, yeah. yeah, two arm, but two side arm, arm packers. Yeah. And uh, they got the yard horse and uh, We have another large plow truck that needs to be yeah. replaced. I, I'm just going to hold off until I hear from Plotsnick and Anderson on any, any money issues of that, that nature, Mr. Chairman. Are we going to be hearing from them on that stuff? Is that part of that? Well, well it's not a uh, half a million. That's yeah, we can. Yeah. I, I want to wait. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to hear it in context with okay. the need. That's fine. We're holding off on that. Recreation infrastructure special revenue fund one hundred and thirty one thousand eight hundred and fourteen dollars. I'll make a motion. All in favor? Unanimous. Road improvement capital reserve fund three hundred thousand dollars. So moved. That's the one we do every year, right? Yeah, that's correct. Right. All in favor? Uh, sidewalks, 50,000. So moved. Second. All in favor? Fire department pickup, 51,000. So moved. Second. All in favor? Cool. Uh, total annual, pre well, it's not the same because we've no. taken a lot out of there. Up. Yeah. Okay, so now we have five corners intersection improvements. Not the year to do it. Yeah, I agree. It would be wonderful to be able to do it, but this is probably not the year. Probably not the year. I mean, I agree 100%. It would be 100% that we should do it, but we have a lot of bigger stuff. We do. Uh, so anybody move that or just leaving it as it is? Okay. Okay. Uh, sewer aeration basin and clarifier rebuilds. That's part of the sewer plant project. That's part zero. of it. All right, so we're going to, all right. Uh, maintenance of historic structures, 20000 That's the blacksmith shop. It needs to have a foundation put underneath it so that we can replace the rotten boys that are holding the building up. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Tuck field offices and storage. That's no, been not zero. The year. Not the year. Okay. Uh, replace lighting, DPW garage. Going to do that out of the regular budget budget for the for the garage. We're starting to already work on that. Okay, lock road sewer replacement. That's part of the no. No, actually, the you skip Molten Road and Lock Road, but they're both they're both sewer replacement projects. All right. Quite frankly, my I, I listed them as zero because I believe that we have to have a sewer plant to send the material to. Absolutely. Before we start building new lines to send it there. Absolutely. The, the lines are working, but do need to be replaced. Okay. Replace solid waste compactor. We're going to ask the board to uh, give us, assuming the funds are available, they look like they will be at the end of the year to replace it out of this year's budget. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to go through the total because that's changed. Lease purchase article, tower bucket bucket ladder truck. That's for the fire department. $1,500,000. Yeah, they're not inexpensive, unfortunately. I Personally, I don't think we, at this point in time, we need that vehicle. I think there's a lot of other things that, first of all, we need manpower down there more than we need a vehicle like that. Right. Um, you know, we're, we're doing double ambulance calls, triple ambulance calls all the time. I think we really need to start to look at the manpower on that. You know, if we put, uh, there are some grants out there, safer grants, yep. they will help pay for part of this. And I would rather see us put a warrant article that would say that we're going to hire four people and, and minimum man. Because if you hired four people, that would put ten, 10 on a shift. At that point in time, you could have five people at the beach. You could run a second ambulance out of the beach without having to wait for coverage. I think uh, the people down the beach have asked for that a number of times. And I think we ought to start looking at that versus trying to buy this ladder truck at this time, where if you bought this ladder, you still don't have the manpower to run it. Okay, so. Well, I think Rusty knows what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, and I 100% agree with him. Okay. So could we... Could we possibly have the fire chief come back with a with a warrant article? If can he look for some grant money out there? 
if we that's ask the will of the board. I'd like to make that motion that we do that, see okay, if he can okay. bring that back and uh, see what we can do about manpower. I know we've we had, I, we, we've heard here a number of times how many double and triple ambulance calls we've had mm -hmm. and, and they're not getting the coverage to come back. And how many times we've had other towns outside coming in to cover our ambulance. And I think it's now we time we start looking at that. Okay. Well, let him bring in figures so we yep. can talk well, that's about it. Okay. So, so it was moved by Rusty, I'll seconded by Regina. All in favor? Right. Unanimous. Uh, Beach Street light uh, res, uh, articles paid by unreserved fund balance. Beach Street lighting at one hundred thousand dollars. We started that program and stopped the program about ten years ago. Uh, we did A Street, B Street, and part of uh, Ashworth Avenue. Uh, the lighting is ten times better than what we get from the private vendors, and the cost is ten percent of what we pay, pay the utility because we are just paying kilowatt hours instead of everything else. Uh, and the protection and, and the security for the buildings is far in excess of what the professional street lighting we purchased from the utilities is concerned. So uh, we had originally been saving $100,000 a year to put towards that, but we town meeting changed that to put towards uh, park and recreation facilities, so we're, we're gradually getting those rebuilt. My suggestion is that we start back on this program so that we can uh, put proper lighting and protection on the other beach streets. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, study articles and engineering articles. Study town flooding issues. 100,000. I, I like to actually make a recommendation on this. Could we have this come out of the unassigned fund balance as well? You can. Could I make that motion here tonight? How much is uh, is it? Hundred thousand. Now, how do you get? How do you come up with the uh, the amount one hundred thousand? It's a guess. It could be ten million. There's, there's, there's no way of knowing is the problem. You've got to start someplace, and a hundred thousand dollars was funds that we have available if you want to take them from surplus. Either that, or we would need to hire an engineering firm to study it to tell us how much this article should be. So what we're what we're doing with this. We're starting the program. Starting the program. Right. To come up with a report of the exact way to do it? Correct. Correct. This is an engineering report. All right. And if it comes out of the unassigned fund, we start. We can start at the town meeting. It has to be appropriated by town meeting. Oh, it has to be, still be appropriated on a warrant article. That's correct. Okay. Yep. And yeah. it um, has to, this is the amount so that we're going to be looking for both the beach area and, and the metal. gentian area. Correct. Yeah. yeah, both areas. Yeah, because we're likely to, you know, we're, when we go there, um, I, you know, I'm, it would be wonderful if they could just come up with an idea of how we can fix it. Mm -hmm. But frankly, I don't think that that's going to happen. I think we're going to be looking for advice of what we need to recommend to these people. You know, what is everybody's responsibility? The town might have some responsibility, right. but there's going to be responsibility on all sides, I think. Yes, here. there is. So we no need question. to come up with some type of a program and yep. something that people can really understand what has to be done. And that's why we left it open just to flooding issues, because mm -hmm. you're correct. There are going to have to be some things done on private property. There's going to be some things done on public property. And we're going to, this is going to be a shared expense no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. So this... So that and, and King's Highway train, drainage would come out of unassigned fund balance. If that's the way the board would like to do it. The King's Highway drainage is actually the engineering work to design that drainage system. Okay. So we can get to the back side of, the, of uh, Meadow Pond. Okay. The method to my madness when I opted to put a lower amount aside to offset the tax rate was in hopes that Mr. Welch has already done about, what, 200000 to come out? Correct. And so that brings us up to this 850. And I already have that paid for, and we haven't even put any money on it. Right. Yet. So yeah. another hundred thousand, we would still be below the million. Right. So I think that we should be able to afford that. Correct. We, we should be able to do that. So if you made a motion, I'll make that motion. Yes. Second. All in favor? All right. Opposed? Uh, and that included the King's Highway drainage. Yes. Are we going to make another motion? We haven't talked about that yet. All right, King's Highway drainage. I'll make the motion. Okay, so now what's that? How much is that? That's 80000 for the engineering. 
the, it would be a composite system. Uh, it would go from Winniconnet Road, there would be a drain system built up Kings Highway to 12th Street. From 12th Street to High Street, there is already an old sewer main there that we can clear, that we can clean out. There is a pump station there so we can pump the water from High Street all the way down to the end of uh, Kings Highway and get rid of it at the end of the beach or the end of the uh, uh, the, uh, the marsh, the end of Eel Creek, if you want to put it that way. Uh, the whole idea is to allow that flow to occur so we can take water out of the upper end, which is not now moving fast enough. Plus, we can also clear up all the drainage on Kings Highway. Yeah, because I just want to make sure that whatever we do here, we do it hopefully the right way because this has already right. been – these pe we've are, the taxpayers have already – been asked to, to spend, I believe, was it two million or four million, mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't work. Yeah, I think you see that happening. This back. is the engineering money to make it work, and and instead of looking at what you were looking at, we we're just talking about that where the town spent twelve million dollars without a single set of plans to go ahead and put sewer in something. We're not like that. We, we, we can't do that. We need to have a concrete set of plans and a concrete way to make the system work or it doesn't get built. No sense wasting the money for something that won't work. Just It's just not necessary. So this engineering money will allow us to build that system and require it to work. And wasn't when that $12 million was spent, there was a separate there were $12 million spent and then there was separate money spent on King's Highway. There was. There was another million plus dollars spent on that end of town. <coughs> Which did the sewer, not the drainage. That's right. correct. But there's really no difference. You're still moving liquids. Right. But, uh, but you want to move them right because you've got to move them right. And that's what abandoned that sewer station and abandoned all that piping up there. Now we can clean that and use it. And the sewer station, I've had it checked. It's in good operating condition. It can do what we want it to do. Great. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, reconstruction of uh, funds from capital reserve. Re reconstruction of portion of Lafayette Road, total to be appropriated from taxes, zero. It's one one point five million, and the total to be appropriated from taxes is zero. Right. Total from capital reserve fund is one point five million. And we approximately have one point six million on that fund at the current time. We're going. To, you just. Recommended a warrant article for the other 300000 which we've been doing each year. That will finish the uh, Lafayette Road construction because we have to improve the drainage there. This will improve the drainage, the sidewalks, the curbing, and we'll repave the entire, rebuild and repave the entire roadway. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Any other warrant articles? D could I bring up the enterprise funds, sewer funds? I would really like if it's if the board could uh, off, approve that Mr. Welch prepare a uh, generic warrant article for that. I, if I may help out, um, selecting Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I think that the proper motion or instruction would be um, based on our, our conversation last week and, and what we all agreed was okay. uh, a dire need that uh, town council through the town manager and public works director prepares a warrant. Uh, uh, to, pr to send to the voters for the appropriate amount of dollars that will be a, a study um, to uh, execute that phenomenon, which is the uh, value enterprise system for sewer, um, for a follow-on election year warrant article. Is that a motion? Yes, sir. Second. All in favor? Okay, good. So well, we'll we'll throw. two others that we talked about back when we first started talking about warrant articles when the uh, Town clerk wanted to come in for a uh, new uh, uh, full-time right. person. And we asked him to put that on a warrant article. And I have that article. Yep, you give it to right. us. So, uh, should we talk about that now? I mean, that's one of the articles there. The also one is the other one for the uh, uh, part-time paralegal. So, I'll make a motion that we do the uh, full-time town clerk assistant. Second. All in favor. Okay, and if I may, just a, a quick discussion. Uh, were there uh, numbers on that? Yeah, 44,662. That's for the 39 weeks for the rest right. of the year. And then it would go next year? 
So that would go. Do we have the figure for what? Uh, Fifty-nine thousand. Okay. So. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? And Second one. The one for the part-time paralegal for town council. Uh, the 39 weeks is uh, $21,056. Uh, full uh, 52 weeks is 28,000. So the actual we'll raise and appropriate this year will be $21,057. All in favor? Well, motion. Second. I'll second. And I just want to clarify that includes all health expenses and everything, correct? Uh, that's part time, so there's no. Oh, health that's health right. Okay. All right. It's just the. Uh, so, all right. yeah. Moved. Seconded. All in favor? Opposed? None. Warren articles? There'll be more. Okay, but we don't have any more right now. Not at the moment, no. And we're going to work on that bond. Yes, sir, we are. Okay. And they were just, but we just voted to uh, to bring these forward. These that aren't the correct. votes yep. of support. Yeah. Right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Okay, next thing, Hampton Beach Area Commission appointment. I know that somebody wants to make a presentation on this, which is fine. But what I'm going to ask first, we have three names. Does anybody want to make a nomination? Maybe we should hear his... Well, we got uh, what I'm asking for. It's for an appointment. I I'll make I'll make a nomination for Nancy Styles. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. Now we have discussion. Let's open it up for discussion. Regina. Well, should it, we don't hear from any of the people that <laughs> I think we know all of them. I mean, we have a motion and a second. If you. Yeah, I guess I will. I'll wait to hear Mr. Bean's presentation. Okay. Rusty, do you have any? Oh, Rick. I'm waiting to hear from Okay, Phil, go. Mr. Chairman, th thank you very much. And um, uh, I know it's Thanksgiving, and uh, we just did Warren Arts. We go, we go to this um, this issue here. Uh, I, I, quite frankly, was surprised when um, Mr. Nyan uh, resigned, which is which is the purpose of um, uh, your motion tonight. And uh, in the paper, he was quoted that he cannot follow uh, the direction of the Board of Selectmen. And I know that um, the Board of Selectmen, to my knowledge, have never um, given any direction to the Hampton Beach Area Commission. We're a separate, independent body. Uh, we're in charge of the prudential affairs of this town. Uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission is an advisory commission. And uh, to, my, to my knowledge, I'm not aware of any of that. And I think there was a, a degree of uh, politicizing um, that resignation, and uh, uh, that that is uh, transcended by um, that movement um, by this board with a four to one vote to pursue a tort issue with the state of New Hampshire. Uh, and there have been a people that um, uh, have been along with that spirit. Some of them have been uh, volunteered to serve as a liaison committee to advance the interests of Hampton that was not voted uh, or approved by this board. Uh, some of those people in, in furthering, uh, and it's, it's their perfect right to do so, uh, have uh, queried uh, or offered suggestions to um, at least two selectmen on this board, at least two, um, about uh, the tenure length of uh, executive contract um, negotiations uh, at the town of Hampton. And uh, again, with Mr. Nyan's um, uh, uh, resignation in the paper, uh, I'm sure perhaps some on this board uh, get a heads up. I didn't. Uh, uh, and again, with the comments, and it's the perfect right of these people to do so, to offer their opinion. But I think when uh, um, we're talking about contract negotiations, there should be transparency. Um, and it was not so. Additionally, there is a, a former Hampton Beach Area Commission um, chairman uh, and one that uh, advocated and wanted to uh, be part of that committee at the um, – uh, state to uh, to get along, if you will, to paraphrase. Uh, he was uh, um, in the newspaper, uh, and again, this is his perfect right, uh, and called, uh, I, I, I'll paraphrase, of all of my ideas, um, a certain one was the most ludicrous, and I, I think that's politicizing um, the environment, and uh, again, their perfect right to do so. Um, I want to talk um, about the founding law of the Hampton Beach Master Plan, and I think it's important to go over that. Uh, I'd like to discuss the powers and duties. I'd like to discuss transparency, 
and what I think is the ultimate failure of that Hampton Beach uh, master plan, uh, which did not identify the sharing of costs and the business relationship between the state of New Hampshire and the town of New Hampshire. And uh, I would, I guess, give um, some highlight to um, North Conway, uh, which um, is fractional compared to uh, the burden that they share um, for state services in reimbursement, fractional compared to their contribution to the economy of New Hampshire. Um, they've received on their um, bypass up there $44 million, Mr. Chairman, um, and uh, $19 million of that went to um, buy rights of ways. Uh, the town of Hampton has never secured um, through the commission um, anywhere near that type of money. Um, and uh, um, I, I have never brought that out before, but this does seem to be politicized. But I will speak to the fact that um, the Conway bypass um, with federal funding has secured $44 million. Uh, traffic counts are down up there. We have people here that are sitting here um, with their properties underwater. We've got the Hampton Beach Area Commission um, that is supposed to advance some of these concerns. North Conway, with traffic actually going down, has secured $44 million, and we have not enjoyed that success. North Conway does not have a state commission to secure that. They did, in fact, however, secure it. Uh, they are not thinking about perhaps going forward with that, and they'll have to return some federal funds. Um, the transparency regarding the... Um, uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission. Uh, I'm on the State uh, Parks website right now. I think it's important when you represent the town of Hampton that there's a professional uh, and uh, transparent, fully transparent uh, personification and data imprint on, on the website. Uh, on this website that I'm looking at right now, which is under the Parks and Recreation, there are no 2017 minutes. Uh, there's no 2017 annual report. There's no 2015 minutes. There are two sets of 2014 minutes. Again, there's no annual reports on this. Uh, the transportation grant data um, that has been secured and advertised as success, there is no uh, transparency. That cannot be found on this website or uh, without a search that I couldn't uh, discover on our town website. Uh, VHB is the firm that is doing the work on the transportation grant, uh, so I understand. Uh, and there's no work product on that on the state website. Uh, we're blind on that. Uh, I know the state is running a bunch of that. Um, but there is no transparency for that uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of grant money. So I think that's uh, problematic. <coughs> Mr. Nye, Mr. Nye and, um, had sent his letter. Uh, dated 6 October, uh, to the Board of Selectmen. He says, I have made this difficult decision based primarily on the differences of beliefs between myself and the majority of the Board of Selectmen regarding ongoing relations with the state of New Hampshire. I believe that our goal should continue to try to work out our difference in all identified areas. Continuing to push forward for state federal funding for critical projects, including the reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard, and not pursue a con costly and lengthy legal suit against the state that could jeopardize favorable, favorable future funding commitments by the state. Interestingly, uh, Seacoast Online opined uh, on 10-3 uh, in their closing three sentences that the town estimates that from 2014 to th <coughs> excuse me, 2017, and I think these numbers are substantially higher, that it has spent $0.7 million in providing fire and ambulance services at the state park. While some argue that taking legal action may hurt the relationship between the town and state, we, which would be the editors at the Seacoast Online, would argue that it would only strengthen it, which to which I would agree. The dis these disputes need to be settled once and for all. This action will hopefully bring clarity to both sides. Our finance director, Christy Pulliam, uh, pulled up, and you just heard the numbers just for the fire department, and I can't help be struck by these, these people down here in the, in the row that, uh, that, are, that I'm looking at tonight with uh, their need uh, for uh, capital infrastructure and uh, the preservation and 
rehabilitation of their property, the three hundred, the thirty million dollars that were underwater for our unobligated or our obligated unfunded pension agreements, our health insurance costs, our fifty million dollars of depreciation in our capital assets. I could go on and on and on and on. Uh, the eight hundred thousand that we talked about, uh, uh, Miss Pulliam, our director. Uh, ran what that buys uh, for a municipal bond. Tonight we're hearing tens and tens of millions. $800,000 uh, for a 20-year bond payment uh, at 2.67% uh, gets the town of Hampton $16 million. And then we would have John, who I think um, is a very nice man. Um, we, have, we, we look at reality differently um, and a very energetic man. Uh, says that we need to get along. And so I would, I would say to John, and I think it's his resignation and politicizing that, and that is my opinion, and I do think that's politicized, um, and is outside the duties of the commission, and I'll get to that. Uh, if you divide that $16 million by the average $5,000 of taxes that somebody pays in this town, I would ask Mr. Nine, which 3,200 taxpayers that have to forfeit that $16 million uh, will he ask um, to get along and volunteer their money for unreimbursed expenses to the state of New Hampshire? So again, I'll say to you, and I think it's more that $800,000 of a year bonds $16 million, $16 million. And if you take $5,000 for an average tax payment, which 3,200 people would Mr. Nyan um, ask to give up their $5,000? Uh, to run contrary to what I think, what perhaps many other people in this town think, and what the Seacoast Media Group thinks. And I think that's an important issue. Uh, the sewer bonds, uh, the seawall bonds. Uh, and that doesn't speak to the, the folks that uh, don't have a lot of money in this stock market, that are working class people. Um, I work, Rick works, all of you work. Um, there are some people that are ill in this town. There are some people that can't work. There are some people who have been marginalized by this new economy. There are some people that have never regained the setbacks from 2008. And uh, where do we go turning our backs um, for any group uh, to not have this discussion with the state about $16 million? And I think it's huge. Moving on to the uh, law itself. Um, I am a legislator, of course, in uh, – Concord, and uh, there's good laws, there's well-written laws, and no laws of perfect law, and I, I think this, uh, as it comes to be seen now, is a bad law, uh, and I will uh, talk specifically about it, and it's, it's, it's very uh, government-oriented, it's very nebulous, and uh, I, I think it's, it's, um, it's Kremlin-esque, it really is uh, state planning, and uh, it hasn't held the test of time. In order to proactively deal with the projected future growth in Hampton Beach and Hampton Beach State Park area, the Commission of Resources and Economic Development shall complete a master plan of the Sea Coast Parks. See, it says the Commission of the Resources and Econo Economic Development shall complete a master plan. So the state is going to complete this. The master plan should incl include a vision for the future of the New Hampshire seacoast is a destination family vacation community. Well, um, who says that any government determines uh, what the future of anybody that owns private property will be? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, but it's not for people in Concord, not, not for legislators, not for government to tell people how their community is going to end up. The plan shall include but not be limited to a vision for what Hampton Beach should look like in the future. Um, and I, I just find that absurd, that any, any legislature would uh, say um, that we, we're going to legislate something uh, to see what something looks like in the future. Uh, uh, I, I, I just find that absurd. Um, the establishment of a year-round facility at the beach should all be considered. Uh, that's something that I would agree with, but something the state has never done. Mr. Nichols uh, asked uh, recently and inquired, uh, about this uh, appointment process, uh, and he asked that uh, anybody that owns a home like these folks back here um, be involved uh, with less emphasis on the business uh, uh, interest in the, in the uh, Hampton Beach area. In Hampton, 
Uh, it's our, all of our tax money. And the residential valuation at the beach uh, uh, versus um, business is now approaching four to one in weighted values. Four to one. It's four times as much residential valuation. It's approaching that. It's over three when this was done 18 years ago. And now it's approaching four. And he raises a good question um, about people with skin in the game, whether it's residents uh, or uh, businesses. And everybody uh, that's a citizen in this town has a right, has an absolute right to voice their opinion. But I think when you're um, an advisor on a commission and you're um, exclaiming your, your dissatisfaction as Mr. Nyan has, uh, I don't know what Mr. Nyan's uh, qualifications are. I don't know if he's a taxpayer. I don't know if he's a business owner. I don't know if he actually writes a check to the taxpayer in this town, like many of us do, like these people do. And I think it's important to have skin in the game, especially if you are calling out the selectmen, which is his perfect right to do. And I think that um, combined with how that raw is written, written, it's problematic. I want to talk about 216J, which is the powers and duties of the uh, commission and the composition of the people that are on this board or this advisory commission. Uh, it is 216J2. The nine members of the commission shall be as follows. There is not one instance in this law, as it's written, as I'm looking here, that requires you to be a taxpayer. There's not one iota of mandatory uh, citizenship in the town of Hampton. There are regional planning commission members. There's uh, state members. There's Department of Transportation designees, Director of the Office of State Planning, and their designees. So there's two or three in Concord, and they just designate who they want to be on this commission. But there is not one, and I'm looking at it, um, and as I read the law, and as a legislator, and as someone that examines legal contracts on a daily basis, two rep rep members representing the town of Hampton appointed by the selectmen. Nowhere in this law does it say they have to be taxpayers or residents. Two members representing the Hampton Beach Villa District appointed by the precinct commissioners. No mention that they have to be residents or taxpayers. One member representing the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce appointed by its board of directors. Again, nobody mandated to have skin in the game. And I find that troubling. And I, I find that something that needs to be brought out. Going further um, about the powers and the duties of the commission. And I think this politicizing, and I think as I, I go on with this presentation, that uh, the board, the commission, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, has usurped powers and duties that are, are not enumerated in the law. Mr. Nyan's resignation, uh, because he could not follow the direction of the selectmen, is not enumerated in law. It's not a requisite of his job. 216J3, powers and duties of the commission. Consult and advise the state and town on implementation strategies for the Hampton Beach Master Plan. The Hampton Beach Master Plan was written and finished in 2001, 17 years ago. And uh, if you go back to 2001, uh, I can't even remember that far, but the world has changed um, faster than it's ever changed uh, in probably history with technology, with the development of that beach, with title issues, with infrastructure uh, destruction. Uh, and it's based on the Hampton Beach Master Plan. And I will go over the Hampton Beach Master Plan in specifics uh, with serious problems in that founding document. So in my, my interpretation, the law is flawed. Uh, the powers and duties, number one, <clears throat> that's flawed because it's going off a 2001 document. And you'll see the flaws that I will bring out in detail in a moment, according to me assist in the promotion, periodic review, and recommendations of updates of the Master Beach Plan. I've said just a few moments ago that it was um, done in 2001. Mr. Nye, in, in an email to Mr. Welch uh, on 5.6.16, uh, says, Fred, to my knowledge, there have not been any enacted amendments th since the commission's inception. So there have been no changes to this document in 17 years. And I find uh, that serious problematic. As a businessman, as a family man, as a selectman, uh, the world changes quickly. 
never so quickly as today, uh, and there have been none. Again, the duties and the powers are to assist in the promotion, if they choose to promote it, that's their business. Um, periodic review and recommendation of updates, there have been none, so says Mr. Nyan last year. Assist the state and town in acquiring lands and rights to lands to ensure a consistent management plan. Uh, Mr. Welch, have there been any, been any securing of lands? Okay, another, another uh, moot uh, duty. Assist the town to develop building and zoning language and design and review guidelines and procedures for the plan area. Uh, we have a planning board. We have a board of selectmen. We have citizens. We don't need help from Concord on this. Concord's trying to help us just a little bit too much uh, in many people's opinions. Uh, we have uh, all of our uh, faculties as business owners. And uh, again, I think it's a poorly written, poorly written law. Um, we don't need an advisory commission. Um, and they have every right of citizens, although they're not required to be citizens. I don't think we need the state designees, the three or four of them, to come down here and tell the town of Hampton what to do in our zoning and what to do with our planning. And again, this is part of the law. Provide advice and counsel to the state and town on proposed land use developments and capital projects for consistency with the plan. Have there been any consist uh, any capital projects put forward, Mr. Welch, by the Hampton Beach Area Commission? Not that I'm aware of, at least not while I've been here. Okay. Um, again, we're Hampton. We've got that. Consult with the Hampton Beach Area Business and Residents to promote the plan. Well, if they want to be a marketing representative, if you're promoting the plan, promotions are promotions. Uh, this uh, is uh, a marketing uh, phrase, promotion. They're going to promote now a plan from 2001. Well, good luck with that. I'm not going to get into that very much. If you can, with a straight face, promote something from 2001, and I'm being polite, um, and I see people smiling, um, and I'm smiling, uh, I'll just leave it at that. Um, the Hampton Beach Master Plan, and it's, it's about this big. I took out a bunch of, a bunch of pages on it. Uh, again, it's from 7 November 2001 when this was done. And here's, here's my markup on it. Um, that in and of itself, it is, uh, if it ever was relevant, it is now uh, functionally uh, obsolete, and in fact, obsolete, period. On page... Uh, one, two, for the plan summary. And again, this gets into the Kremlin-esque. The uh, Soviet Union, which was a miserable failure, um, it's now uh, 100 years old with miserable failure, uh, would do five-year plans. Uh, this states, the recommendations here and lay out a step-by-step -step process for actions implementing proposed actions over a 50-year period. Uh, nobody does that, but that's in the article that Mr. Nyan emailed Mr. Welch that has not been changed in 18 years. It should appeal to everybody, and I'm on plain page 1-5, and he's talking about the beach. It should appeal to everyone as a clean and comfortable place. Well, um, of course. Um, okay, if someone paid for the studies. Buildings should be attractive, well-maintained, with unique character linked to the historic traditions and special beach conditions found here. Last time I checked, this is America. We have property rights, and you can uh, do whatever you want in accordance with the law. And it is not for the Hampton Beach Master Plan from 2001 to dictate to anybody uh, and anybody on that commission in advisory capacity what to do with your property. I am on page, uh, plan summary, page 1-14. And it's a requirement, improving the image of Hampton Beach. And I have a serious problem with this uh, right here, and I disavow this. Um, and it says, Hampton Beach has retained an image that does not contribute favorably to its quality of life, either as a destination or as a place to live or work. And this is in the study um, from 2001. I disavow that. I think anybody from Hampton disavows that. I think it's... Uh, I think it's earth shattering in its negativity to the town, and I think it's insulting. And uh, anybody that hasn't changed this or stripped this language um, needs to be um, spoken to uh, about this type of language in this day and age. Uh, and it's tremendously insulting. Furthermore, 
The poor image creates a cumulative loss of value that is translated direct to, directly into lo relatively low property values and tax revenues. Uh, this is a 17-year-old document. Uh, the world has changed down there. Um, I, 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 I just, those words speak for themselves and how negative and, and how uh, destructive they are for a document that a commission is empowered, uh, with that being the cornerstone, to uh, execute their duties. Going on, plan summary, page 1-15. Improved infrastructure, amenities, and public attractions, access to and from the beach, parkings and buildings, and increasing the diversity of businesses in residential areas and other positive changes will attract higher quality businesses and visitors. Now, let me just say that again, Mr. Chairman. This is a document, I don't even think you can talk like this today, that hasn't been changed in 17 years that it will attract higher quality businesses and visitors. Are they talking about my business? Whose business are they talking about? What higher quality visitor are we going to get? Uh, I, I find that deeply offensive uh, in this day and age for this to be a document that the Hampton Beach, Hampton Beach Area Commission um, allows uh, to remain in print and to be the founding document in accordance with the law and how they carry out their duties. Page 2-5 or 11-5, the visual quality of Hampton Beach townscape and architectural character should be improved. Uh, you know, it, it goes on and on, the insults, this, the, uh, um, the uh, diminishing, talking about quality of people, quality of businesses, and I find it deeply insulting. Pardon me while I just review this. Continuing, for example, programs should be established to encourage painting of building exteriors by establishing a, comp a completion for creative designs or by starting a community painting program, give out free paint to property owners to paint boards and murals. These and other programs should be thoroughly organized to ensure that the property owners are current with and understand the themes and designs and have some direction about how to improve their homes and businesses. And so if you're a property owner, according to this document, uh, and, and I, I apologize, Mr. Chairman, I didn't write this and I, I don't ascribe to it, but in case you're a property owner in Hampton, um, in this founding document, um, you need some direction on how to improve your homes and businesses. Well, come on down to Bean Insurance or maybe a Central Care and let us know what we gotta do to improve things. And, um, We'll be all excited about it. Uh, again, from the November 7th, page 4-5, um, it talks about zoning districts, parking, design and site review, signage, enforcement. Uh, we're the town of Hampton. We got that. We've got our people. We've got our taxpayers. We'll take care of that. Thank you very much. It's just my opinion. Going on. Um, in case you didn't know, and this is in the long-term strategy, some buildings may have to be re rehabilitated or demolished to support this strategy. <laughs> I need to say that again. I hope it's not my building. I like my building. Some buildings may have to be rehabilitated or demolished to support this strategy. Going on with the insults from the Hampton Beach Area Master Plan, from an economic standpoint, Hampton Beach has the least desirable type of tourism, as the typical visitor does not spend much money but contributes negatively to the traffic environmental problems. So um, the hit parade just keeps on coming on this document, and I'm not making this up, and uh, I could uh, keep on digging on this, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about their way forward and the actual powers and duties. Um, in case you can't get my drift, I'm not recommending we uh, – put anybody on this commission. Um, the long-term uh, tabs, the matrix of pr proposed economic strategy, economic incentive and econom economic development programs, the long-term, 10 to 50 years uh, in, the, in the box, keep tabs on existing businesses. I don't know what that means, keep tabs on existing businesses. Um, marketing programs and special events, identify new housing markets. I, I absolutely have no idea what they're talking about. 
on the parking issues down here, and this is again talking about the usurpation of rights and duties. Uh, we're a nation of law. We've examined the law. We've examined the commission's duties. We've examined the uh, the uh, uh, makeup of the, of the group. Uh, in their 2014 minutes, uh, this is in May sometime, Mr. Watson, who was a state employee and a very nice man, as they're all nice men and women on this board or men, Mr. Watson said the Rockingham Planning Commission did a lot of work, this is a quote, on the parking study, and they came to the consensus that there was not a parking issue, but rather a communication issue. The number of this spaces is not a problem. It is knowing where people are willing to park to get to the beaches. Well, having said that, we as a board voted on an intramodal parking lot that would have put a diesel uh, bus facility up here. This board voted it down. And you can see that the state director, um, who was a member of that this, and from the transportation department, said the parking's not a problem. Well, we go to their, their, their minutes, um, and they want to put in a diesel um, bus stop. They want to put in a diesel repair facility. They want to put in hundreds and hundreds of cars up into one of the most pristine uh, environments here in Hampton that was defeated by this board. Um, and there's a member here that says, a parking lot close to Winnicott High School is a win-win situation. Is there are many reasons to have parking? But we've heard from the state director they don't need parking. We hear from another member, it's the chairman in fact, that if people looked at the site proposed for the intermodal, anything would be better than what it looks like today. I go out back there and I uh, paddleboard. There's red-tailed hawk, there's bald eagle, there's birds of prey, there's uh, aquatic uh, wildlife, and it is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful natural environment. There's another um, person on there that doesn't live in town that says that the town should not th not take this off the table. No, but the peas gravitated to larger, ever-changing expectations. Those intermodals are both at Newburyport, they're an eyesore, they're a crime uh, area, as our police chief testified. Uh, they're impervious and they're pollution ridden. In wrapping up this, there's um, a couple of more things, Mr. Chairman. And again, if you have a source document that's the basis for a commission, um, I'm reading right here the summary of recommendations, and they have time frames. Um, and it's the 10 to 50 year phase that we're in. Uh, and they've got check marks. We're well past the phase one and phase two. We're in phase uh, three. And for those that are central planners like the Russians used to be, uh, that we're in the 10 to 50 year plan. Um, it's to acquire permitting is needed for all public projects. Again, the town of Hampton uh, doesn't need help from an advisory commission on that, and we don't need help from the state of New Hampshire on that. We have fully competent boards to do that. Uh, a big one here that the state has struggled with, um, I've done a PowerPoint on that, is ensure the beach is clean. Uh, in May this year, the beach was not clean. Uh, the governor and I had a chat about that. Uh, again, in the 10 to 50, they were to close off portions of Ocean Boulevard. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, reconstruct Ashworth Avenue. There have been talks about making roads one way. And uh, um, again, people that don't have skin in the game telling business owners and taxpayers what to do in this town. Support parking needs with a structure at an appropriate location. That's in the 50-year plan. We're just seeing them trying to develop beautiful, pristine land here. The first thing you'd see coming into Hampton, the state transportation expert says we don't need it, but they push forward with that project anyway, in spite of what the state expert says, in spite of the fact they don't need it. So be it. Uh, extend events and attractions to the shoulder in off seasons. That would be, unless they're opening up their pavilion, uh, a private sector uh, responsibility. Um, enhance monitoring of development activity. Uh, you can monitor all you want, uh, state regulators and people that don't live in town. Uh, this is Hampton. People have property rights. We have a planning board. We have a zoning board. We have regulations. Uh, we don't need uh, an advisory commission monitoring uh, um, our development. Uh, this is a free country. Um, continue to require conservation easements on developments. We have a conservation commission. Again, we have a planning board. We don't need an advisory commission or another level of uh, supervision. Seek local, state, and federal funding for open space acquisition and acquire upland, prop, upland properties that have high natural value through easement of purchase. So while they call for that, 
they were advocating, in spite of their own state expert testimony in parking, to raise uh, a beautiful, pristine, natural environment and put a parking lot in that they don't need. Um, one last page on their 50-year phase uh, in something that hasn't been done. And Mr. Welch, what, have, what has been HBAC's efforts, uh, according to you, with uh, the uh, six-foot depth of channel in the mooring field? I know you're working on that. We are working to get the Army, Army Corps of Engineers to dredge that. Okay, good. Um, and then there's uh, some utility uh, requirements there that uh, are moot points. And then lastly, uh, and again, we're paying for this, ensure continuation of adequate police protection. We have a police chief. We have a town manager. We have a board of selectmen. We don't need the Hampton Beach Area Commission um, telling us um, and people in Concord that are in transportation departments and uh, resource and uh, economics telling us how to run our town. My opinion only, Mr. Chairman. And ensure that there's adequate fire and medical protection. Again, they're getting all of those benefits and we're paying for it. And I'm wrapping up um, here, um, again, with a usurpation of, of powers and duties. There's a, a business owner here in their, their um, uh, 2016 um, notes, the minutes, that um, an applicant uh, met with this uh, Hampton Beach Advisory Commission with their attorney. Attorneys aren't free. Um, there is no requirement uh, that anybody in town that owns a business uh, has to meet with the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Uh, you can examine online the uh, duties and powers of the commission. Nobody has to pay an attorney to uh, brief the Hampton Beach Area Commission for anything. It's not in the law, uh, and it's not required. And if the town, Hampton Beach Area Commission wants to listen to um, uh, what our planning board is reviewing, what our zoning board's reviewing, what perhaps our legal counsel is, then they're citizens um, of Hampton. I suppose they have a right. Um, I have a problem if people from Concord are gonna start coming down and reviewing um, what are local matters in this town. And again, as I, as I look at people here with severe infrastructure problems in their home, uh, the, in spite of all of those, um, what I think are glaring insults to the town and uh, uh, many, many uh, of the paragraphs which are uh, deeply insulting and should be stricken immediately, if not the whole agreement. Um, it's a failure because it has not um, addressed in 2001 that very obvious need to balance the unreimbursed expenses that would allow the town of Hampton to bond $16 million to help these people out back here uh, for services that we provide on the state. And there are people that, that say we should just let that happen, and we've already talked about that. Um, we have $50 million of infrastructure need. Uh, that's about 30% of it right there. Right there is 30% of it that we're, we're doing those services with. This document, in, 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 in addition to its many flaws, um, that uh, Hampton Beach Master Plan, which I think should be scrapped, um, uh, never addresses that. And it's a glaring, glaring omission. Uh, and uh, with that wastewater treatment plan, with the bonding that Plasnik and Anderson is going to come into, I think it's seriously problematic. Um, that wraps up my uh, brief on that. And as such, uh, I will not support. Uh, Mr. Griffin does a great job on that. Uh, he's our eyes and ears on that as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I would never um, appoint anybody to a uh, commission that has that kind of wording in it uh, and those kind of powers that I think have been usurped and politicized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'm going to respond a little bit. The Hampton Beach Master Plan was written by James Barrington, who was Hampton Town Manager, Rusty Bridal, who was the uh, New Hampshire State uh, Representative, uh, Diane Flint Hardy, who was the Park Planner, Sheila Francor, who was a Hampton resident and New Hampshire State representative. Tom Gillick, Planning Board Chairman. Uh, Brian Gotts, Hampton Waterworks. John Grand Mason, the Ashworth by the Sea business owner. Beverly Hollingsworth, who's a longtime uh, Hampton resident and was a state senator. Uh, Diane Lee Montaigne, 
uh, Tom Madsen, who was dread, uh, McLean, who was dread, uh, Bruce Nickerson, who was the zoning board representative, Doc Knoll, President Hampton Beach Chamber of Commerce, Robert Preston, Preston Real Estate, Richard Roy, Citizen at Large, Peter Tilton, Commercial Fish, Fishing Industry re Representative, Skip Windermeyer, uh, Hampton Beach Precinct Commissioner, James Workman, Selectman Representative. So the Hampton Beach Master Plan was not written by Conca. It was written by citizens uh, uh, of, excuse me, you yeah. talked and I did not interrupt. That's, that's incorrect. That is absolutely correct. Members of the Hampton Beach Master Plan Advisory Committee. It's right there. Okay, that, you're no, incorrect. No, no, they no. Didn't no. Write it. The Cecil Group wrote it, Mr. Chairman. No, no, hold on. It's correct. What hold you're saying on. is incorrect. Did I interrupt you? Well, what you're saying is incorrect. I wanted well, to correct okay. you. Okay. The other thing <laughs> is, true. when you say that there was no transparency, there have been a number of public meetings. I attended one just last week that you could have attended on the transportation grant and on what's going to be done down at the beach with the uh, DOT. There's a website that has all of that on it, which is very transparent. So that's, uh, I don't think, right. Uh, when you talk about architectural uh, character and ordinance, our own planning board has just developed a whole book on architectural uh, character of the town and what they believe it should be. So that's not Soviet Union. That's taking the planning of the town and going and saying this is the type of things we want. We just talked very uh, uh, extensively about a new building that's going up on Lafayette Street and what the architecture of that building should be to fit in with the town. So that's not being Soviet Union at all. That's being the town wants to develop in this area and they want there. I agree 100% that we don't get the proper reimbursement from the state that we should be getting, but that's not the Hampton Beach Area Commission's job to get that. Um, Ocean Boulevard. Fred, you went to Washington with John Nyan and Nancy Stiles to, to work on grants with Kelly Ayotte, I believe. With all four members of the delegation. All four members of the delegation yeah. to work on getting capital for Ocean Boulevard to re redo Ocean Boulevard to reduce the sidewalks down there. The intermodal was more of the Rockingham Planning Commission than it was the Hampton Beach Commission or the state. It was the Rockingham Planning Commission, and I agree 100% that the diesels would have been terrible, but having a shuttle to the beach would have been a positive, and that's part of their job to work on the, that, that type of thing, so I think they've done that. Annual reports, they, John Nyan has been here a number of times, sat here and talked to us about the annual reports. John Nyan's resigning has nothing to do with what's going on right now with the Hampton uh, Beach Area Commission. So I think we should appoint somebody. I know that Nancy Stiles has worked on the dredging at the beach at the harbor. Fred, correct? She did a lot of work on that. Yeah. She did a lot of work going for the um, Army Corps of Engineers. She's done a lot of work on attempting to get us more of the uh, rooms and meals taxes to get us more reimbursement. We haven't gotten it. That's a legislative issue. We've got to keep working on it. We need more money, absolutely. But we can't leave, you know, people down at the beach not being transported by fire and not being protected by police. So uh, I, I just think some of the things you said were wrong. We shot down the, the, uh, the Rockingham... Uh, Planning Commission's intermodal thing, whereas we should have accepted parts of it and gone with that. We shot down, or we didn't, we, we tried to shoot down the, uh, the Ocean Boulevard because of the sidewalks. The town didn't want to take responsibility of the sidewalks. The state has put money into uh, Hampton Beach. They put $18 million into the new bathhouses. We put $12 million into sewers. Was town? I don't think it's 18 million, 16. Okay, 16 million. They also finished the seawall all along North Beach. So there has been quite a bit of work done by the state to help improve their side so they could help improve the other side. There's nobody on this list of people that I just talked about who would be targeting types of tourists. I, I believe, my interpretation is that, that they wanted people to come and say, stay longer in Hampton 
rather than to be day trippers. And day trippers don't spend a lot of money. They want them to spend money. So that's my say. Rick. My, my, I've taken notes as everyone's been talking here, so I'm going to address all these issues. They may not be in order. But I did want to uh, – I have some um, things that I can maybe help out with a bit. Like, for instance, um, he is right. It was the Cecil Group that did the master plan. But those people uh, – and they were paid a big amount of money to do it. Mm. And – the people that you suggested are the ones that held all of the uh, meetings that, you know, it was an open process. They brought people in, and a lot of people had stuff to contribute. At the time, this was before I was selected, so this is uh, more than 13 years ago. I think I was on the zoning board at the time, so I asked, and I had just gotten on it. So it's 14 years ago. <clears throat> And I wanted to be on the master plan thing. And they, uh, Tom Gillick was in charge of most of it, um, picking out the people and this and that. So he put me on it, but I got on the master plan for uptown here, which we did the same thing at the time, same thing. We had a, lot, we had a grant, I want to say it might have been around $15,000. And we spent it, and we invited people they, you know, had um, coffee and donuts for them all, and there were many meetings. And eventually, uh, it didn't take long for the $15,000 to be uh, gone. And a lot of the things that were talked about uh, were very similar to about the experience Hampton, uh, about how people wanted the better downtown. None of that was looked into either, I don't think, by experience Hampton, but there was lots of uh, uh, people... Uh, that got that testified, and there were these were huge amounts of people that came out, probably more than what was at the beach. Uh, we had them on Saturdays, you know, and it 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 just it didn't go anywhere. I never saw after the, all of that work was done, it was filed somewhere. It's never been heard from again. Um, but the master plan at the beach does call for it to be a Victorian seaside village. Doesn't look anything like that. And uh, but so, so uh, that was one of the most important things. And at the beginning, when I was on the zoning board, and I was here at the board of selectmen, we did try to talk people into being a seaside village. But P because this is an advisory committee, they didn't have to listen, and they didn't. And that's why the Hampton Beach Area Commission, which I've been on for, I believe, if John's been there ten years, I've been there nine years. Uh, there was really nothing we could do, so we moved on from that. No one tried to force anyone to be a Victorian seaside village. But the Hampton Beach Master Plan <coughs> does call for a family vacation community and, and for that to be promoted. And I think what we've heard here tonight and many nights is that there are four times more people than businesses at the beach. So the people, like the people that are here tonight, these are the type of issues that should be worked on by the Hampton Beach Master Plan. And that's why when we do have a new person um, that is appointed, if there's one appointed to this committee, that, that's what we need them to look after. We need, but that's why I was so disappointed after working with John for all this time. He went on and on about he could no longer take direction. There's never been any direction given to him. Never. Never. And uh, in fact, he, if he was trying to follow the direction of the board, many times he encouraged the, the uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission to take a contrary opinion or a vote to promote whatever. Sometimes it went along with what the board wanted, and sometimes it didn't. So there's never been any. Uh, now, whether we need to do that in the future, do we need to take a look and uh, say these things to someone? I think what makes a board, though, is the fact that everybody has something different to bring into it. And here there are uh, – Bill Watson does a wonderful job, uh, and Mike um, Hausman, he does a wonderful job. Bill is with DOT, and Mike is – I always forget the name of the new – they've changed the name of Dread. But those people do a nice job. Um, then there's the person that is at large. It doesn't have to be a person from Hampton. I don't think any of these uh, positions have to be someone that's from Hampton, and I, I doubt if they have to be a taxpayer. 
Um, but <clears throat> the Hampton, uh, the planning board in Hampton has a representative uh, on the board. So, you know, they are responsible or, you know, they should be looking out and they are looking out for uh, the people in Hampton. Um, the village district, which represents both the business interests of the community and definitely all of the people that live in the Hampton Village District. So they should be concerned about what's happening. And you can't help but feel when you're there that the better part of the time is devoted to business, not to the residents of Hampton. And so I would like to see that change um, somewhat. Uh, I know that um, one of the things that was brought up here tonight is that there aren't any of the plans on the website. Well, the plans are just now coming into fruition, and they probably are going to be there. I think you probably heard that the other night. They're, they're, and they're going to, there's a, like a rough draft coming up, and then there'll be more finished um, plans as it goes along. So you, from what I understand, there's going to be some probably on the, um, website and in the newspaper and stuff like that. That's all just about ready to start coming out in dribs and drabs. Um, but some of the things that were brought up there the other night um, is, uh, and when you mentioned about when Mr. Welch and the other group of people went down to Washington, they did not go down there to get the money. They went down there to get the money to do the plan that's being done now. And from the way the state talked about it, you know, the William Rose the other night, you know, this, as far as he's concerned, this is the master plan study that he's concerned with, which is the plan for Ocean Boulevard. But I would like to know who is responsible for the master plan in regards to what should be happening for, uh, for the people that live there. Is it our planning board? When I asked you this question recently, Mr. Welch, you know, how much responsibility does our planning board have? Now, the other night uh, when we were discussing this, you know, it just amazed me that we're talking about the road, and I'm all for whatever is going to be done. I just hope that there can be more done, because here they're making a plan to put the road in from the, from the Seabrook or Hampton Bridge all the way, it's now supposed to go as far as the beginning of Boar's Head, although it's factored in to go to Winnicott Road and even factored in to eventually go to High Street. But um, the, uh, when I asked, well, what about any sewage work, which has, you know, sewage work has a lot to do, we've done the $12 million worth of sewer, uh, work for on the other side of the street, but there are there is no sewage work being done here. Now that's got to factor into uh, some of this flooding and misery that's being uh, experienced down there. So there is no sewage work. I asked, well, how many sewage pipes are there? There, no one could give me an answer. Where does it drain out to? I never got an answer to that. Uh, more importantly. When Fran McMahon, who is the, I think he's the, is he the planning board chairman this chairman. year? Yeah. Um, he asked about, is there an environmental study? It doesn't appear that there's even going to be an environmental study. That just didn't even sound right to me. So, you know, and what is our going to be at the end of the day when all of this is done? What is going to be uh, our planning board, what what role are they going to have? Because they're not too happy about it. We all know that. They've uh, raised questions, and their nose has gotten out of joint. But I'm not saying that I'm against any progress that's being made. But the way it looks to me now, the state has put $8 million. Now, uh, they're only going to do the first couple of phases with that $8 million, because that's all that will happen. After that, we're relying on the kindness of Donald Trump and the federal government to where that rest of that money is going to come. And hopefully that's going to come. Otherwise, whatever is going to be, there's probably not going to be anything done. 
and uh, or whatever does get done will not become from there may be some more money that comes from the state, but it's you know it's going to fall to the taxpayers um, and the uh, you know after they were doing this study, all of a sudden they said, well, you know we don't have any more money left, so uh, you know every, all basically things just sort of stop uh, like the part of Ocean Boulevard that has the biggest drainage issues, which is between the beginning of Boris Head to Winnicunit Road. That was all dropped out. And uh, although it still factors in there, and you know, by the time I'm 75, maybe something might happen, but I may just go to the promised land and see nothing happen after I've been sitting for 54 years waiting for something to happen, and it's disgusting. Um, the uh, it's so upsetting to me that I can barely stand it. Um, that I see, and I saw it this week, these people talk about what's happening with their property. I've watched it forever, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. But these are the type of issues I see that the Hampton Area Commission could be working on. Um, and we have to remember that it is only in, a, it is only an advisory position. Um, and, you know, these are two separate issues, the issues of uh, what we have, our problems that we face here that we all know about of the lack of funding that we get from the state. But I don't think these issues belong at the Hampton Beach Area Commission at all. So no one, including John Nyan, should have ever been commenting on them, in my opinion. Um, and <clears throat> the... We need to make sure that the people that live, not to mention the people that work, not to mention the people that have businesses, that they're all considered uh, by this Hampton Beach Area Commission um, and the planning that they do in the future and they have, that they're advising us on. It's not just all about business. And the bigger part of what's been going on lately is about business. But then on the other hand, there's talk about the, the bridge and the road, and all of these things make it better for the residents too, but I think we have to remember that ratio of four to one. There are more people living there and making that their home than, and they have a long history. Many people have lived there more than 50 years, uh, many more than 60 years. So we need to, you know, we need to take into consideration what's happening for them. The, um, we, uh, need a representative that will definitely, you know, do something with these interests um, and work on the master plan so that in the future it does answer to the needs of business people and the four times more residents that live there. And I think that is so important. Um, and that's why I tonight will be voting for Nancy Stiles because I do feel that she has uh, managed to weigh all of these things. She's been very active and I've not ever seen anyone that has been more, that answers to people in such a quick way as she has. And uh, I do think though that we have to consider uh, that many people, for instance, Dick Nichols was referenced, uh, they have, you know, that people feel that there needs to be more representatives there for the people that live there. And I, when I was appointed from this board, I was on the first board that appointed John, um, but I was appointed not to represent, uh, to represent the town of Hampton, not the Board of Selectmen. I was, uh, I was asked to be on the commission because I live there. Not, and I am a business person also, but I also am a person that has lived there for 54 years. And I've always looked at my, what I have to offer there is the fact that I live there. 
and I've been more than happy to bring everything back that I could to report here to the board. So I think I've done two things, but I'm not like the selectman's representative. I'm the town of Hampton's representative. So I am going to be in favor of Nancy Stiles. Rusty? Well, you're right. The Cecil group did write it at the instruction and of the advisory group that was. The number of people that were on that advisory group, about 80% of them were Hampton people or Hampton, or Hampton Beach people. Uh, you know, you, you brought up a number of things in there about them talking, and I can remember back when they were talking about painting buildings. If you remember back during the 70s, all the boarded up fronts down there that got all the graffiti over them, and that's what that was. The get store them, fronts. The storefronts to get them to paint it so it didn't look so bad. It wasn't the fact that they wanted them to paint their buildings. It was the, the boarding up and all the graffiti that got on them. That's what that whole thing was about. So I do remember that. Uh, the beach has come a long way in a long time. The state has done. They've done the bathrooms. And those bathrooms are open year-round, something that we never had 10 years ago, 8 or 10 years ago. They are looking at the – they're working on the bridge. They're working on the road. We may disagree with them on a lot of things, but I think the – there is a important uh, need for an advisory committee like the Hampton Beach Area Commission. And uh, I, I think, as Rick said, Nancy's been around a long time. Nancy knows a lot of people, and her constituent service, nobody holds a candle to her. Nobody holds a candle to her, and that's why I think she would be a good person for that. Thank you. Yes, sorry. Okay, so the 2001 Matt Hampton Beach Master Plan was written by Cecil? Cecil yeah. Group. Cecil Group. Okay, we're all in agreement on that. I think the point is the plan is 2001. It's 18 years old. What has been updated on it? I have problems. One, I'm not going to be appointing anyone to this commission because I think the law of the commission needs to be reviewed more by the Board of Selectmen and also by the Hampton Beach Area Commission. And also, I'm looking at a more recent document, which is the Commission's minutes of uh, October 26th. And Mr. Nine, who's retired, is um, reading his top priorities for the next eight months, which I'm a little confusing because he just retired from the Commission. So I don't really understand why he's the one setting the priorities for them, but oh well. So number one, continuation in the overseeing of the transportation grant. Scheduling ending August 2018. Right, could you maybe fill me in a little bit more on what that might mean? Oh, say it again. The transportation grant. The yeah. transfer, that's the grant that's being worked on now. The thing is, I agree with you. I, I don't really see John. You know, John's just trying to make it. What happens there at those meetings? Frankly, not a whole lot all of the time. And um, so you have to sit there and talk about something. Uh, many no. times there <laughs> isn't anybody that comes, um, you know, so you have to sit and talk about something. So he's trying to help out the next person that he thinks is probably going to be appointed there. I don't think it's up to him to, you know, he's just promoting this. Okay. He fielded out, uh, besides the things that you're going to go over there now, there were just as many that were taken out that we're not going to consider. So he's just showing the progress of the things that we've talked about. <clears throat> okay. But it's a very loose arrangement. Um, number two, continuing to follow future steps and what is required to move up the reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard, Hampton Sea Brook Bridge to High Street with DOT transportation 10-year plan. And that's kind of important. Plan. Yeah, that's a little bit important, and I yeah. wish that maybe – the Board of Selectmen could get some of those updates a little bit more regular than they do. I know maybe the town manager would like to get a little bit more information it's on it. I know when people progress. ask me what's going on and i got to tell them, they sort of look at me like, yeah, sorry, I already go to three meetings a week. I couldn't make the commissioner's meeting this week. I was actually at another function. And as an elected official, I don't think I should have to go to their meetings to find out what's going on. So that's the problem I have. I don't have a problem with any of the three people that – are asked to be appointed to that. I have a problem appointing a position that I feel is not needed to appoint. Like Mr. Bean said, we have a planning board, we have a zoning board, we have a board of selectmen. A lot of the people that have put in the information that the, um, the commission gathered in the last year actually 
brought the information forward from Facebook. So in other words, they, a lot of the people lived in Boston, Watertown, uh, surrounding areas. So a lot of, there was a lot of input taken that people don't even live around here. Right. Okay. But there are people that do come to Hampton and have had experience in the past. And this, being, we have the people that come every year and have been coming every year for 15, 20 years. And actually days. there were only 80, uh, about 80 to 80, one or 82 people that actually, con that, and that's where the majority of the input came for this last study. 80 something uh, people that commented on Facebook. Because I w watched, or I went to a planning board meeting, and I, it was a while ago, maybe the fall, maybe even long, last fall. Um, and they were talking some of the ideas in the planning board, you could see some of them. They were just shocked at some of the uh, suggestions. That and in, in this study, there should be somewhere, there should be copies of what people did comment on. There's a record somewhere of that, that the, is it VH, uh, whatever it is, VHB, they have yes. the records of all that, those comments. Okay, so then number three, identify new economic development initiatives to assist business owners in the construction reconstruction of properties and then would improve more hotel motel rooms. Um, so improve more hotel motel rooms. Would that be something working on more making it year long down there? Because I know that's the initial, a lot of people that have businesses down well, there would like to see that happen. There, one of the um, uh, ideas that came forward, which you're discussing right now, was what they could do to find better sources of uh, uh, um, getting loans and stuff like that so that there could be Incentives. more incentives uh, so that there could be more incentives to people to build hotel rooms but you know there's some possible hotels that are getting ready to be sold that they I asked them I said have you been in touch with any of these people that were like were that rotary that was proposed at Highland Ave there's some major things happening there the people that own that land have never been talked to at all and they, I think they should be clue, They should be part of it. I agree. And then we got the big one, number four. Review once again other areas of the master plan that has not yet been addressed by the commission. So they haven't addressed like the first four pages, right? So I'm sorry, but to me, uh, the point is uh, I don't see why we need to appoint anyone to this position as long as the commission does exist. If we deserve that's what the town needs, we still need that commission, then I think I can get all the information I need from our town of Hampton, Rap Rick Griffin. Uh, number five, identify all drainage issues throughout the beach from High Street to the Hampton Seabrook Bridge and explore assorted options to resolve. Isn't that what we're trying to work on, town manager? And I was made in charge of that, but what does that mean? I mean... Uh, there's nothing I can are do. They gonna I give tried us, to fight in here for the years. Funds for it because I think that's all we really need. Yeah. yeah, John made me the one to report on that, and he says you can help raise the money. I'm thinking, raise the money? <laughs> I have a hard time paying my mortgage. I mean, you know, I, I would like to be able to do something positive, but I don't have a clue. And I am one of the <laughs> committee members. So that's why I'm hoping Nancy Stiles might be able to do that. And I feel like she has the qualifications more so than I do, to be truthful. And I'm hoping she'll be willing to take that on for these people. Uh, get involved, number six, get involved in participating in the discussion, pros and cons of assorted options, new or rebuild for the new Hampton Seabrook Bridge, which we sort of got an update on that a couple weeks ago. They were here. But I would like to be involved in those discussions. Like, I just see this as... I don't necessarily see the point of it, I guess is what I'm saying. I don't, under the, when I read the law word for word, I don't see that they're following it. But that's just me. I'm not so, so sure that we, it's, this is a state commission, so I don't think we have really any, any angle in here. We can do everything that you just said here, and they're supposed to advise us. We don't even have to listen to them. Right, but the thing is, all these state people are making the presentations to them. They're not coming here and making them us. To me, that's a problem. No, I don't well, want to no, go to another meeting. They should come here, and we, we should invite them. And, and, and many times I tell them there that you need to come and talk to don't the board. don't have time to go to another meeting. I'm yeah. sorry. I work. Yeah. I, 
you know, I don't have time. I have a boyfriend. I like to have a life outside of reading yeah. for my selectman job. Yeah, I once hope in a that while, Nancy so. Stiles can bring this to the next level where it should be myself. Well, I don't see anyone being appointed will uh, help this out. I think it needs to be revisited before we, I know we can't do anything for the commission as a whole, but we can definitely put a halt to just appointing people for the heck of it. Okay, we have a we have motion, we have a second. All in favor? One, two, three. Opposed? One, two. Thank you. And I, you know, I hope that Nancy can do something and straighten this out. There's a lot of people that are there, and I can tell you that all mean really well, but everybody has their own interests. In okay, we already did enterprise fund. Yes, sir, you did. Yes, so, all set. and we're all set on that. Yep. Okay. Uh, repeal of Selectman's Ordinance regarding begging, Chapter 769-11 and 769-12. Want to explain that? So moved. <laughs> I mean, I can't do it anymore. The, uh, our, our great Supreme Court and a number of other Supreme Courts in the New England region have declared uh, laws dealing with begging to be unconstitutional. The United States Supreme Court has already seen that as unconstitutional. The the violation First Amendment, of right. the First Amendment rights of the beggars. So, uh, by having this ordinance on the books, we are, in fact, inviting someone to sue us even if we try, don't try to do anything to a beggar. So town council has recommended that we, in fact, remove it from the books until such time as the courts can come up with an, a, a strategy or a, an option that will allow towns to address these situations in appropriate manners. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Yeah. Now, does this mean Opposed? I can't beg Opposed. the state anymore okay. to do when, something? When, when, no, no, when, sure. Let's make sure. So we had three favor and two opposed? Yeah. Okay. You didn't ask for any discussion. I'm that. sorry. Let, let's have discussion. I'm sorry. Hey, no need to apologize, Mr. Chairman. It's a tough job. Um, <laughs> I, I just, there, there is a, a brief that was mentioned by the town attorney. I think it would be great if we could all eyeball that. And uh, I don't expect to bring this motion up again, but I just wanted to read that and get a if little. If you'd like thank to you. have it, we can certainly provide thank you, you so with much. 30 sub pages. It was 64. 64. <laughs> well, there's only 30 of them that are relevant. I've always been provided with it. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, anything else under new business? Closing comments. Yeah, I, I would, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you for um, uh, attending the, all the meetings you do and your, and your leadership and your chairmanship. It's not an easy job, and I, I would uh, um, kind of in line with um, the paralegal uh, talk about our legal department at the Northampton uh, meeting we had this week on uh, the Northampton uh, folks had in uh, the EPA and state regulatory officials and Mark Gerald. Uh, along with this young lady um, and our uh, Dr. Ballestero did one heck of a job in presenting over there. It was a three and a half hour meeting. Um, Selectman Barnes is right. We all have uh, time constraints, but it was a long meeting uh, and sometimes uh, there was a little friction, but Mark Gerald did one heck of a job representing the town and got across some, some great, very great points and uh, Representative Cushing was there as well. And I just wanted to emphasize uh, what a fabulous job uh, Attorney Gerald did there, and I was very thankful that you were there. And thank you for all of you members for attending the meetings that you did last week. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I would like to ask um, Mr. Bridal something. I've been. Uh, some, uh, what does it mean when a, um, a uh, you know, a fu the, the, the fire a fire hydrant when it's yellow? What does it mean? All of the all of the municipal-owned fire hydrants in town are supposed to be yellow. Red ones are private, privately owned. So if it's a municipal one, it's, it's a yellow hydrant. It's yellow. Red hydrants are privately owned. The other thing I wanted to mention about um, the Hampton Area Commission is that the town planner attends all of the events, and he's up to uh, speed on all of it, and he acts very interested when he's there, and he's a big help to them. So the, the town actually has the... Uh, the one from the planning board plus him there. And he's a, aware of everything that's going on. Motion to adjourn at 940. 2146. Second. Favor. Excellent. I thought it was going to vote opposed. <laughs>